Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is homecoming here on the beautiful campus of Delaware State University. Hornet fans, we are back with another live broadcast on DSUHornets.com as we have a homecoming matchup today between the Bisons of Howard University as they visit Alumni Stadium to do battle with your Delaware State University Hornets. Back alongside my broadcast partner, Chris Moore. My name is Byron Dixon, and as fans begin to settle in at Alumni Stadium, we have Hornet football here for you on WDSU TV. Today's game, DSU takes on longtime rival Howard in a Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference contest on homecoming. The Hornets are coming off a 44-3 road loss to MEAC co-leader North Carolina a &T. DSU freshman quarterback Jack McDaniels completed 11 of 15 passes for 83 yards. Keenan Black also appeared at quarterback for the Hornets, connecting on 7 of 17 in the game. A&T led 16 to 0 when Wisdom Nazidi nailed a career-best 47-yard field goal early in the second quarter to get the Hornets on the board. Nazidi is actually perfect on five field goal attempts this season to lead all FCS kickers. McDaniels has completed 61 of 115 for 674 and one touchdown for the freshman. A Delaware State's leading rusher, Bryson Aline, 150 yards on 39 attempts. This is going to be a big key to get him going. And defensively, Kawan Sel Selby, his team leader with 29 total tackles. I'm going to go right to my broadcast partner, Chris Moore. Chris, first of all, happy to be back alongside your homecoming. What are your initial thoughts on the game, brother? Well, Hornets obviously still have that uh, losing streak looming over them, but the good news, the last time they won was here against the Howard Bison, so certainly one I think that they circled as an opportunity. Uh, they had an opportunity a couple weeks ago against Norfolk State uh, here at, at uh, Alumni Stadium, lost 17-7. to The offense was unable to get going. I'm looking to see the quarterback situation. Uh, we know this team can run the football, Nifees Nif West, uh, even despite uh, Mike Waters being out, Bryson Aline's been really good this year, so we know they can run the football. Uh, Coach Carter said before the season that he wants to settle in on one quarterback. Last year they, they bounced back and forth. Uh, two, we saw three different quarterbacks play for them last season. This year they named Jack McDaniels the preseason starter, and uh, I guess things weren't going the way Coach Carter wanted to. They inserted Keenan Black. He's gotten some action. Uh, struggled last week, 7 of 17. So I think this is still Jack McDaniels' job, but I think Coach Carter trying to find a spark uh, to get this offense going because they're struggling right now. And, and three years in, I mean, this is Coach Carter's third year, and, and I think he feels the pressure. To, it's time to start winning. Uh, you know, you know, you know it was going to be a tough rebuild, but it's it's you know in your third year playing teams like Howard, teams like Norfolk State here at Alumni Stadium, you got to start winning these football games, and I think he feels that pressure. Well, the series between the Bisons and the Hornets, they're meeting for the 60th consecutive year and 74th time overall, making it Delaware State's oldest rivalry amongst all teams. DSU actually holds a 39, 33, and one lead in the all-time series. Howard won last year's meeting 26-21 down in D.C. Howard's Anthony Fillar rushed for 281 yards and two touchdowns to overshadow the performance of the aforementioned Mike Waters, who's hurt today, who ran for a freshman record 221 yards and two scores. The t last time the teams met at DSU, the Hornets scored the last 13 points, and like Chris said, their last one in 2015, winning 32-31 in the classic game. And Chris, like you said, the last one was against Howard, Coach Carter is the coach for DSU. It's been a tough rebuild. Quarterback has been one of the biggest issues. But looking at the Howard side, have a familiar name at quarterback, a name Kalen Newton, name people may be familiar with. Yeah, Kalen Newton uh, leading this team, a very good runner of the football. Uh, he's a dual threat just like his older brother. Uh, but you look at that, he has thrown seven interceptions this season. He's a freshman, just like Jack McDaniels. Uh, so you've got a battle of two freshmen. Who's going to take care of the football? I think that's going to be very important. As I said, Newton does have seven interceptions, only five passing touchdowns. Uh, but, he again, he is a great runner, third in the conference in uh, yards per game rushing. So he's certainly a dual threat, certainly a guy that the Hornets are going to have to keep 11 sets of eyes on on defense. I expect a lot of zone coverage. Uh, not a lot of man-to-man. -man. They're going to play a lot of zone, try and keep eyes on Newton. And it's going to be important at the D-line position, rush with discipline. You're not just able to just try and bull rush and, 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 uh, and get sacks. You have to be disciplined. You have to keep him in the pocket because if you don't, a lot of teams have found out by now he's a dangerous young man. UNLV found that out the hard way, one of the biggest upsets in, in the history of college football, Howard going to Las Vegas and beating a, uh, an, F an FBS team, beating a, a UNLV 
44 to 40, I believe, is the score. So Newton in this offense can put up some points. They definitely can. And like we said, the Hornets struggling with some injuries. Mike Waters, uh, preseason all me second team, he's out, and definitely with the knee injury. And Malik Harris, the senior, Chris, one of the best linemen, linebackers on his team, defensive captain, also 2017 Miak, all second team pick, out for the year as well. So some tough injuries for the Hornets. Yeah, well, Malik Harris and and, uh, and Mike Waters, both preseason all Miak, both on the second team. Uh, you know, you talked about the, the impact Water has, Waters had in that 220-yard rushing game against this Howard team. So Waters can really play. So can Malik Harris. I think you were looking for a lot out of him. It's a shame for Harris' senior year to be lost to an injury. Uh, it's tough. But, again, a young team, Coach Carter looking to rebuild, uh, continuing that rebuild. So it's an opportunity to get more guys in the game, see what else you have. Obviously, though, in the middle, you want to have your big horse there. Uh, if there's any spot where you want a senior or a junior, somebody that's been through it, it's a middle linebacker. And unfortunately, uh, the Hornets have lost that. But again, with, in a rebuilding year, it's a shame for, for Malik Harris, but it's an opportunity for Coach Carter to see what he has behind him going forward. So uh, you got to take positives out of everything, especially when you're in a rebuild. And I think Coach Carter looking to do that, getting some new guys in there. And we're going to see today's going to be one of their biggest challenges of the season against, as we mentioned, Kalen Newton. You have to be disciplined. You have to be smart. And you have to keep eyes on them. Otherwise, you're going to be in trouble. Well, we got some new uniforms for the Hornets, Chris. They're going to be sporting the alternate black, I call them, with the powder blue accents on the side. And Howard will be rocking their white with the dark blue pant so we'll be able to distinguish but i like the uniforms of Hornets. yeah well we talked about nike instead of russell athletic last year and it's uh, it's showing there's and uh, i think it, it's helping with the culture you know when when you need a rebuild as bad as as delaware state university football needed a rebuild something like that really helps because obviously we millennials we care about how we look so you know to have uniforms the old saying look good feel good play good and uh, i think the hornets are trying to build towards that but it's certainly it's when you rebuild a culture, uh, you gotta you got to redo a lot of things. And I think uh, having that, that swoosh on the uniform and, and, like you said, some fresh-looking uniforms, the gray with the blue, uh, I like it. We'll see, uh, we'll see if they can, can uh, turn it into a win today. Well, Chris, who are your impact players and your keys to the game as we're about a minute from kickoff? Impact players got to be Kalen Newton. We mentioned him for – uh, Howard, we've talked about him a lot. He's been really, really good this year, effective uh, uh, over 206 yards passing a game, third in the MIAC in rushing yards per game. Uh, so he's going to be dangerous, dual threat. We've talked about that. And the five touchdowns, the seven interceptions, though, that's that's the number you have to look at if you're Coach Carter. He's a freshman. He will make mistakes. The important thing, take advantage of them. That's going to be the key for the Hornets facing Kalen Newton. They're going to have to take advantage of the mistakes that he makes. As for the Hornets, Bryson Aline, uh, same kind of story for the Hornets. Uh, quarterback struggling, you know, two freshmen working back and forth with him. I look for Bryson Aline to be a big part of the uh, of overall today because we know how good he is in the return game. He's second in the MIAC in all-purpose yards, 123.8 uh, yards a game. He averages 3.8 yards a carry, and he's one of the captains on this football team. So they look to him. He's an important piece. And I think Bryson Aline is going to be the key for the Hornets to get any win that they're going to have this season. Well, Nazidi set to kick off for the Hornets, and he'll be kicking off to the Bisons. Jaquez Ezward back deep to return for the Bisons. Nazidi having a really good year. Uh, perfect on kicks, like I said, and we'll see what he does here. He and Fidel Romo Martinez both been outstanding. One thing, remember, when Derek was, was announcing the games, his, his favorite key to the game is special teams because the special teams was atrocious before Coach Garter got here. And if there's anything he has rebuilt and rebuilt quickly, it's been the special teams. It is no longer a, uh, a weakness to this team. If anything, it's a strength. Wisdom Nazidi, the 47-yarder last week, their only points. Uh, Fidel Romo Martinez, a MEAC player of the week earlier this season for the special team. So, Special team has been outstanding for the Hornets. Short kick. It will be taken in by Ezzard. He'll go up past the 20, past the 25, going to the 30. There's going to be a flag on the play. This could be coming back, but he runs up past the 50, inside the 40. But this could be coming back, folks. But it's homecoming. We're here on WDSU TV. Alongside Chris Moore, Hornets Bisons will hear what the flag is. And you saw Wisdom Nazidi already. He made that tackle. That's a touchdown-saving tackle. Obviously, we will see the call. Got a legal block in the back. Oh, it looks like Justin Dooley, wide receiver on the special teams unit. So that'll be coming back. So we'll take it, Chris. 
Absolutely, and that's you know that's that's a key. You, you're trying to get this win. It's homecoming. That's not a good way to start to give up that big of a return. So that's a big call, an important call for the Hornets to get it back. All right, so we are ready. Looks like as the Bisons come out with Kayla Newton, we'll see if they can keep him in the pocket. And uh, Chris, as we get ready, what are your keys to the game real quick? Well, number one, got to be protect the football. You have to take care of it. Close games, two, two teams struggling. You've got to protect the football. Key to the game, number two, run, run, and run some more. We talked about Bryce and Aline, but you've also got Nyfees West. They've got to run the football. And lastly, capitalize on opportunities. Well, speaking of capitalize on opportunities, pressure early on on Newton. And there's an incomplete pass, but we got another flag, and Laundry's getting started early. Well, they're going to call pass interference. That's what the flag's for, but I don't know that it's going to stand. The pass got deflected. There was no way that ball was catchable. I don't see any way you can you can uphold that. Well, good sign early on by the Horn is getting pressure, especially it looks like up front with the big fellas. Well, it's going to stand, Chris. It looks like they called it on. Looks like that's going to be pass interference on Selby. Well, you see Coach Carter signaling to the refs the ball got tipped uh, there was no way that ball was catchable that can't that's that's a that's just a bad call and and already for the hornets so first and at the 22 newton takes it hands it off there's going to be a right up inside the 30 still on his feet and he's still going and that's going to be a first down looks like carry is by wortham and looks like he's pretty tough to bring down chris and his first down for the bison good physical run by wortham and and you saw the eye candy there three guys in the backfield two of them to the right of kayla newton in the shotgun not something you typically see but you're going to get a lot of different looks from howard they want to run the football with a lot of different guys speaking of different looks two running backs to newton's right fakes it throws has a mask going to be complete looks like number 80 on the reception looks like it's going to be gillespie and he's close to another first down. Looks like a gain of about eight. So it'll be second and two at Hornet. 35. Hornets play a lot of soft off coverage. So those underneath routes are going to be there. And, and uh, Howard's going to dare them to try and beat them. There it is, an option. Newton takes it. He's going to keep it himself. Take it out the do-it-yourself kick. Gets the first down. Gets to the midfield. And there you see the legs of Newton. Well, that's, that's the key on first down. First down, you give up nine yards. You open up the playbook for Newton. He's able to run, throw it there. You saw the option. There's a lot of different things the Hornets have to do well on first down if they're going to keep themselves in this game and stop this Howard offense. A little bit of a no huddle. Bice is moving left to right. Overcast day here at Alumni Stadium, so rain could be in the forecast. Newton gives it off. Going to be a double reverse, a little trickeration here. He has blockers in front of him. Past the 40. He's still running. 30, 20. He's being chased by a man. Let's see if he gets him. And that's going to be a touchdown. Or let's see where they mark him out at. They're going to call it a touchdown. Looks like it is a double reverse. Guy Lamorna Jr. Big game there, Chris, and Hornets probably weren't expecting that. Well, that's that's the trickeration. That's all the things you're going to get from Howard. They want to run the football, and they're going to run it in a lot of different ways. And you saw it there, flag. the double reverse out to, to Lemonier, and he makes the big play, and the Hornets undisciplined there, so focused on trying to get over to Newton, stop this running game, and Howard throws a reverse at him, and the Hornets were not prepared for that at all. And it showed. So we got our sportsman like penalty on the morning, and it'll be assessed on the kickoff. So the touchdown will stand, and looks like they're going to try to go for two here. Let's see if they try to get the Hornets out of position or if they actually do it. Well, they're going to kick the extra point, but score and drive four plays, 93 yards, and a touchdown. And they're going to – that was a little trickeration there, Chris. They're going to take the points here, and they'll just try to kick it as Lebowski comes out for the extra point attempt. Didn't look like the officials were set there, and so – so Maybe throw a flag on them, Chris. Well, uh, uh, the officials aren't set. So then if you're Howard, we've just showed our hand – you know, they were trying to do probably some more trickeration, so Delaware State, the defense, a different look, and ended up, ended up, once that whistle blows, now the defense has a chance to see it, react, and maybe make adjustments. 
You know, you see that kind of thing when teams try and run trickeration. Uh, once they show their hand, that's why you only see trick plays once or twice a game at most. Because once you show them, you've, you've tipped the defense off and they're going to be aware the rest of the way. But a good opening drive for Howard. One throw, three runs, and they ran it right down the Hornets' throat. And Coach Carter and the defense going to have to make adjustments. Four plays, 93 yards. Started from that on seven and only a minute 39. You talk about a quick strike offense. It's going to be a long day if the Hornets can't stop these guys. Well, and the key, I mean, defensively, they, the defense has been the stronger unit this season, so the defense is going to have to step up today and keep them in the game because the offense has struggled. We mentioned Jack McDaniels, the struggles uh, that they've had offensively finding a rhythm. But I think the Hornets have to control the ball, try and keep Kalen Newton and that offense off the field as much as possible. You have to run it. They're going to use Bryson Aline. that we're going to see Nyfees West. Uh, and they, they can't fall behind. Last game they threw it 32 times between McDaniels between the two quarterbacks they use, they can't afford uh, to do that in this game or in any game for that matter. They've got to be able to run the football if they're going to have chances of winning football games. So 13-21 remaining in the opening quarter. It's homecoming, so as fans begin to continually foul in, hopefully the crowd, Chris, can give this team some energy, but they need something to cheer for. Well, they're going to get good field position barring a huge mistake after that unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Howard's going to be kicking from the 20. So this would be a big bonus if you can start this drive up around the 40-yard line, 45-yard line. That's a great opportunity for the offense to respond. Extremely important for them to get good field position here. But like I said, with the unsportsmanlike conduct, they should get it. Lebowski set to kick. And we got two Hornets up past the 20 at the 22. Lebowski's kick is going to be taken at the 20. It's going to be returned by Aline. He does it all. He runs back, kicks two, breaks off a tackle, and gets up to about the 33. And that's where the Hornets will set up shop, Chris. That That's a good kick right there. Aline, I think, went a lot further back than he anticipated he would. And so, you know, we mentioned Delaware State with an opportunity maybe to start that drive around the 40, 45. Instead, it's going to be inside their own 35. So still not bad field position, but... Following that penalty, you probably would uh, would have thought you'd get a little bit better field position out of that. Well, Chris, Jack McDaniels will get the call to start. He'll come out as the quarterback for the Hornets, the freshman. They'll come out in the eye formation. Looks like Nafis West, who's been a pleasant surprise, a redshirt freshman, will be the up back. And we got some movement early on. Looks like on the Hornets, this could be coming back. Probably be a false start. So that's not the best way to start if you're a Hornet fan or a Hornet offense. No, but I like the eye formation idea. Change things up a little bit. Uh, we've seen them a lot in the shotgun, but I think you get yourself in an eye formation or even an offset eye. You're, you're setting up to run the football, and I mentioned key to the game number two, run, run, and run some more. So we'll see what they do out of this. Well, it'll be second and first and 15, excuse me. And West gets it, and he is taken down immediately on the play. It'll be a loss, and he's taken down by Isaiah Flood, and a flood there of Bisons in the backfield. Good penetration by Flood to get through quickly. West nowhere to go, had to cut it back immediately. But Flood, a good job not only getting in the backfield, but wrapping up. Loss of two, second and 17 on the 26 as we approach 12-45 in quarter number one. Hornets looking to get something going as we saw Newton and the Bisons get a touchdown. It'll go back to West. West gets positive gain there. May will give him two on the play. And following that unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, this is just not how you want to respond. You get pinned a little deeper than you'd like. Then you start with a false start. Two runs for not much gain. And now you're faced with a third and long and probably going to have to give the ball right back to a hot offense. Third and 15. Let's see if the Bisons bring pressure uh, to try to rattle the freshman quarterback. Third and 15 on the 28. And let's see what Coach Carter and the offense draw up here. McDaniels in the gun. Three receivers to his right, one to his left, bottom of your screen. Daniel McDaniels takes the snap, rolls left. Makes a man miss, but he's going to go down. Just enough of them. Fingertips. Jason Collins on the sack coming up from that cornerback position. Make a stop, and Chris. Not the best way to start there for the Hornets offense. No, absolutely not what you're looking for. McDaniel's got to be able to stay on your feet uh, in that kind of situation. Uh, if he get, if he's able to get out of that tackle, he's able to set up and really buy time and uh, and find an open man. But unfortunately, taken down for the Hornets. 
And now Romo Martinez is going to step in. Well, your best bet here is a good punt to pin them deep. And we'll see. Martinez's punt. Let's see what it does. Wobbler. It's going to bounce. It's going to take a horn and bounce and go out of bounds. Let's see the spot of that. Looks like at about 25. They're going to start at the 26, and that's where Newton and the offense will come back out. Four plays last drive, Chris. They can't let them do this again, right? No, you have to be disciplined with this team. They're gonna, again, they're going to show you a lot of different looks, a lot of eye candy guys moving before uh, before the snap. You've got to stay disciplined in your approach. A lot of teams talk about it. You see it more and more now at the NFL level, at the college level. A lot more teams are using eye candy before the snap, and uh, you have to stay disciplined on the defensive side of the football. And uh, that's going to be the key for the Hornets on defense if they're going to have any chance of slowing down Kalen Newton in this high-powered rushing attack. So we got a break into action here as looks like the Bisons will have a ball at the 26. Well, Chris, last game we were here. They lost to Norfolk State 17-7. So a lot closer game than the scoreboard may indicate with some of the things that stood out to you. They had some opportunities, just unable to convert. Jack McDaniels had three interceptions in that game. Uh, two of them, I know at least one was in the end zone. I believe there was a second one in the end zone. So, you know, they had opportunities to get themselves in that game, and it really could have been a much different story. But you, you get that with a freshman quarterback. You've got to take your lumps. The important thing is that he learns from them, uh, and this is the first time we've seen them back. Uh, obviously, they had the tough test against one of the best teams in the country, North Carolina A&T. Well, Newton is going to fake it, keep it, throw it. It's going to be caught. And it's going to be a first down on a lot more, gain of about 15 on the play. Newton to fill off for a first down in. The well, that's, motion. that's the undisciplined. They, they play action, you bite on it, then you're going after Newton. And all the meanwhile, Philly All's wide open out in the flat. You just it, it, They're not making it difficult on Howard. Gain of 15, first down at 45, wasting no time. Newton rolls left, still has it. He's going to keep it himself, and he's going to get a big gain. He's going to get about five on the play, so turning nothing into something there. Well, but you'll take that. That's that's a good sign. The defensive line able to get a really good push up front, and uh, you force Newton out of the pocket. And of course, with his ability, he's going to have some opportunities to pick up yardage. But that's that's what you need to see. When when Howard tries to throw the ball, you have to take advantage, and uh, and get good push up front. And we got a horn it down on the field, so we'll have a stop and play. And that's the last thing the Horns want to see now is another injured player, especially on the defensive side of the ball. And he's up. Looks like the player that was down was Howard Warren, uh, 55. So, Chris, don't want to lose any players on defense, especially when you're playing a mobile quarterback. No. Obviously, you know, and this team's already been bit by the injury bug enough uh, on both sides of the football. So, uh, he's able to walk off under his own power, though. So, probably, I would guess at some point we would see him back in the game. So only a gain of three they're going to give Newton. So a second and seven at the 46, 1040 remaining quarter number one. Fakes it. He's going to go deep. Has a man. Let's see what happens. And it's going to be an overthrow. But it uh, looks like he was trying to go back to his guy on the play there uh, from the last one on uh, Gillespie who had the gain on the last drive. That was good coverage downfield to safety over top. Uh, there was nowhere really for Newton to fit that ball in anyway. So probably a good thing for Howard's sake that it was overthrown. But now you've got third and seven. You did a good job on first down, forced him to throw on second down. This is when you have to make a stop and get off the field against an offense like this. And I wouldn't be surprised if Howard goes with a little okie doke and runs it again. Third and seven, unbalanced line, screen pass. It's going to be taken in and great tackle there to prevent him from getting the first down. Reception made on the play by Ezzard, but he's going to be stopped short, and it'll be fourth down. Let's see what Howard does here, Chris. I don't look, think there's any hesitation. They're going to go for it. They trust their ability to run the football, and especially in this kind of short yardage situation, I think they have faith that more often than not, they're going to pick it up. Fourth and two, ball in the 47. Ten minutes remaining. Newton, option, throws it left, has a man. Let's see what they mark it. See That's going to be very close. Looks I like think he might have been down. He looks like he's on. right on the first down marker. Phil Y'all on the carry. Let's see what the official spotted. Let's see if they're generous to the home fans here at DSU. I think they're going to call for a measure, but that looks really close. I think he's got it by maybe the nose of the football, but but I I think they're going to measure that one. Need look like it was down, but. That's a 50-50 call. 
as we get a replay here. And it looks like knee might have been down, but depends on the spot. And we'll get the chain gain out to measure. Up, oh, it's a first down, Chris. By the nose of the football, like By I said. About three inches. That's that's a first down, uh, based on the spot. Well, they say it's a game of inches. You see it there. Yep, and the Hornets end up just a little bit short on the inches there. But again, like I said, Howard trusts their ability in those situations. I was surprised they didn't go right up the middle. But Dell State has been getting good, good up front pressure so far in this one. First and, and we'll 10 at the 45, and we'll get a timeout, timeout by the Hornets, I guess, to give the defense some rest and try to set up and figure out what they're going to do against this defense. I don't think they liked what they saw out of Howard's offense, uh, their setup, and, uh, you know, you don't want to burn timeouts, especially this early in the first half uh, against this good of a football team. You know, but if you don't like what you see, I mean, you got to hold them here. I don't, you know, you can't. You don't want to fall behind 14 nothing with the way your offense has struggled so far this season. So this is this is a very very important uh, drive for this Hornet defense. 7-0, first and ten of the 45 for the Bisons. Well, Chris, for an offense like this, it does a lot of motion, a lot of movement, unbalanced lines, a lot of screens, a lot of running with the quarterback. What do you do as a defense? Well, first things first, you have to tackle well uh, because you give a team too many opportunities. They love to get the ball in guys' hands in open space, so you've got to be able to make tackles. Uh, and I've said it, and I'm going to continue to say it, you have to be disciplined. You have to know your assignment. Bill Belichick, do your job. You have to know what your assignment is and do it, and do it the best you can. Obviously, you're going to get beat sometimes, uh, but you have to stay disciplined. When you become undisciplined, they will, you will leave gaping holes for this offense, and that's what happened on the first touchdown. So we got a carry. It's going to be given up the middle, and it's going to be a big gain on the play. And Jordan Scott. So to use a little bit of everybody receivers' backs, if you're on this offense, you're going to probably get a chance to touch the ball. Yeah, big hole up the middle there for Howard. And just, just easy to run the ball through there. But when it's getting good push on the on passing plays, need to continue that on running plays as well. Up tempo and a big hit there on the play. Jordan Scott just got a wallop on the play. Tackle, big hit by Hessler. I felt that up here, Chris. Yeah, that was a big hit, and, that, and that's that's a, a, a message, message message sender there. I got tongue-tied there, but that's that's important. You send a message. Uh, you don't want to run the ball up the middle, and when you can take away any dimension of their running game, that's you know that's going to be big. We'll call it third and about three. Newton fakes it, throws it, has a man wide open. It's going to be completed for a first down. Newton to Anthony. First down, Bisons, and the play action you see works perfectly. They're setting up, looking for the run. Yeah, when you're running the ball that well, play action really, really makes things difficult. The Hornets were in man-to-man, -man, and uh, play action slant round over the middle is almost one of the most unstoppable uh, plays in football when you're running the ball well. See it in the NFL and college. Newton throwing right, has a man high, went up the ladder to get that one. And it's going to be completed to fill off and a short gain on the play. Uh, Newton, good job there, checking it down, not forcing the big play. And as you said, probably a little bit of growth as you see week to week in this game. Well, he was a little bit inaccurate there. He's fortunate that that ball didn't get over the head of, of his receiver, Phil Yall, because uh, Gary Garfield Heslop was right there behind. If that ball gets tipped up in the air, that might be a pick six. So we'll call it second and ten, so no gain on the play. Ball at the 26. And we'll get a carry, and looks like he may have got one as Wortham is tackled on a play by Stevens. Stevens back in the game, who we saw leave with the injury. And Chris will set up third and long. Another, another big opportunity for this Hornets defense, the best one they've had so far, third and 11. Uh, but we've seen Howard. I wouldn't be surprised if Howard is able to get 9, 10 yards to see them go for it again. Third and 11, shotgun for Newton. Two backs to his right, for Law to his right, the receiver. It's going to be an out route and great defense on a play. He read that like a book. It's going to be knocked away and a great play there on third down by the defense, Chris. Yeah, that's a big time play on the outside. That's a huge, huge play. And if, again, no matter how, as good as Howard's running game is, if you can make them one dimensional and, and really take away the passing game, uh, it, it can really make things easier on you. And you see here Newton trying to get it outside. Looks like it was Selby. And a great play by Selby. And, and That's what he does. Exactly. <laughs> they need him to be big. So Lebowski from 44, Chris. We'll see his leg here. No win. 
Uh, pretty smooth. Let's see. Hold is good. Kick is up. Kick is. They're going to call it good, it looks like. And it is. Three points for the Bisons. So it'll be a 44-yarder good for Lebowski. 10-0 with 7.30 remaining in quarter number one, Chris. Lebowski feeling pretty good today after that kickoff following the uh, the unsportsmanlike conduct, and they're making a 44-yarder. He's feeling pretty good. That was a kick right down the middle, it looked like, from here. 44-yard good. Snap, hold, kick, trifecta in place. And Bison offense moving well. And we got a 12 play. This time 12 plays, 47 yards, 348. Well, when you run the ball that well, uh, you can really quick play offense or you can, can you know, death by a 1,000 cuts. And uh, either way, obviously, Howard will sign up for it. They'll take the points. And 10 nothing. And again, another time for this Hornet offense to answer. And you have to answer because we mentioned it. You can't. They fell behind against North Carolina A&T. Were forced to ball, forced to throw the ball 32 times, and they're just not built to do that right now. They've got to to keep themselves in games, run the ball, keep the other team off the field, and that starts on first down, not getting penalties. But you've got to be able to pick up three, four, five yards on first down. Stay ahead of the chains. This offense is not built to be uh, to be playing against uh, the down and distance marker. Ten points. And sometimes seems like 20 when you can't get anything going offensively. So Lebowski will be back to kick a lean back deep to return. The Hornets could use a good return here, Chris. Hornets will be moving right to left on your radio dial. So this one will be received by Hannah. Hannah runs right past the 20. Jukes a man, gets up past 25. He'll get to about the 27, we'll call it. First 10 for McDaniels in the offense. And Chris, it's going to be important that they have a good first down play. We saw last drive the fall start. Didn't allow him to get a drive start. Yeah, well, getting getting against uh, the chains is never a good thing when you're trying to play against the defense and the down and distance marker. Uh, but especially when you struggle to throw the football, uh, which this team does, again, with a freshman quarterback, they're just not built for that. And we saw that they had the false start penalty. They ran it on first down, lost two yards, ran it on second and 17. If you had a lot of faith in your quarterback, you wouldn't be doing that. You'd be letting him sling it. I'd like to see some screen plays, try and make things easy on your quarterback early on. Get him some confidence. Get him some easy throws that pick up five, six, seven yards. If you can do that, you can settle him in, and then you can maybe take some shots. 724 remaining quarter number one, first and 10 from the 28. McDaniels fakes it, looking for a man. It's going to be a man wide open in the middle. So a good game on first down. We'll call it a gain of nine. And you got to like the play call there out of first down. Well, yeah, I mean, and that's good pass blocking up front. The play action froze the defense. They slowed down the rush. McDaniels had time, went through his read, found a man underneath open over the middle, and there's nine yards on first down. That's how you stay ahead of the chains. Now you're open. You can run a play action and go take a shot. You can say, hey, we're going to try and run the ball twice and take this first down. But he leaves the playbook open. West fakes to him. McDaniels going deep. Makes the man miss, but he's going to go down on the play. Richard Johnson sacking him, moving him back, and – Chris, you probably would want to see the run there. Well, that's that's one of those things as a freshman quarterback you've got to learn. You've got to see the blitz. Uh, Howard showed blitz there. They went they stayed with it. And you never want to be in a play-action play uh, against the blitz. That would have been a good opportunity for a screen pass, maybe a pitch outside, try and catch the defense undisciplined instead the play-action. And McDaniels, as soon as he turned around, nowhere to go with the football. Third and ten ball on the 26. So Hornets moving backwards as we're at six minutes remaining in quarter number one. McDaniels with a full slate of offensive weapons. He's going to throw a short to West. West trying to make something happen. Juice a man moving up past the 40. That's going to be a first down. Not feast West. He still won't go down. And he's John at the sideline as he goes out. That's a play you got to love. It gives energy to the fans and the sideline. Kid's special. And he was special on that play. Just a dump off. McDaniels trying not to get sacked. And West made three guys. Missed, carried a few guys for the first down. And now you hear the crowd getting into it, the sideline getting into it. You need any kind of momentum you can get. That's just a player determined not to go down, making everything happen on his own. And West will stay in the game. McDaniels, as you see, Chris, making a pre-play adjustment, is going to go to West. Left. Has some room. Puts his head down, and he'll be met by a wall of Bisons. But you got to like it. They got to go to West early and often. Looks like he's one of their best playmakers. Yeah, well, he's he's really complete. He's physical. He's tough. You've seen that on the last two plays. But he can make you miss, too, in the open field. You give him an opportunity, he can make you look silly. And so I really like him. I think Coach Carter really likes him. You saw him make a big play uh, in the West Virginia game. We talked about it, the Norfolk State game. So 
uh, I, you know, he's really exciting, really good for this team. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. So they got to keep feeding him the rock. So it'll be a gain of three. A lean in at running back now. So the change of pace, bringing a lean. He'll get it. Same run play, goes left, and that's going to be a loss. Bison's read that one like a book, and he's going to be stopped on the play immediately. Looks like taken in the backfield by Isaiah Flood. Flood making a lot of plays early on. Well, fullback Sean Scott stops right in front of him. The fullback, you're not the guy with the football. You can't stop and do some dancing. you got to run through, guys. And Scott stopped right in front of him. A lean, nowhere to go. And now, once again, you're up against the down and distance marker. Third and 11. West checks back in. He'll go gun with McDaniels. He'll lob to his right. We got three receivers to the right, one to the left. And third and 11 on the 41. McDaniels takes the snap, drops, has nowhere to go. He's going to go down immediately. Looks like we got a couple of Bisons back there. We got Hurtado, and we've got Anglin. One of, the, one of the things you see with young quarterbacks, a lot of times they're afraid to step up into the pocket. McDaniels doesn't have that problem, but they're too antsy to step up in the pocket. He does and steps right into uh, his offensive lineman who was being pushed back. There you'd have liked to see McDaniels roll out to his left. Uh, instead steps up into the pressure and goes down. So fourth and 17, Martinez off the punt. And Bisons will have their third possession of the first quarter. And we still got three minutes left, folks. Great punt there. Let's see where they spot it. Backs up inside the 10. He's going to be not taking down. He's going to stay up, but he's going to go down at about the 15. Taken on the return by Ezzard. A great job there by the special teams unit and a great punt by Martinez. Yeah, it was a great punt and it was great coverage. And a lot of times when you see that go to a punt, you can outkick your coverage and end up giving up a big return. But there, uh, the coverage able to get down, make a big play, and uh, give the defense probably their best opportunity of the day to keep this Howard offense off the board. So they will spot it at the 15, 323, but the third possession, like I said, for the Bisons in the first quarter, Chris. Yeah, well, they continue to run the ball well. Uh, Delaware State, you've got a defensively, you kind of feel an onus right now. You feel a little bit of pressure uh, that you have to make a stop because the offense continues to struggle, and we know they're going to struggle with uh, the offensive line being the way it is. Well, that's going to go over to Falaw about his third carry of the first quarter. So they'll call it a short gain on a play. Let's see about about four yards on the play. So second down and four at the 21. Newton takes the snap, rolls right. So gonna keep it itself. Has room. Pass the 30. Has blockers in front of him to the 40, to the 50. Still on his feet. He didn't step out yet. Being chased and taken out at the 20 from behind. And we're going to get a flag. And that's going to probably be a horse collar. And that's going to add another 15. Lozano dragging from behind, Chris. Well, that, that was all the blocking. Uh, there was just nobody there for the Hornets to take down Newton. That was an easy play, about as easy of an option as you're going to get. Uh, there was one guy there to make the tackle. Obviously, Newton, your halfback, and there was somebody there to block him. So Newton ran right through the hole and was gone. Big game there, as you said, Chris. And we'll get a horse power there, as I said, from Lozano. So they'll add to the the game uh, and they'll be inside of the red zone and they'll mark the ball at the 10 Chris in scoring position yet again just when they get their best opportunity to make a stop second play of the drive a huge play and now they're up against it and there's going to be a short gain on the play it might give them no gain got back to the line of scrimmage and it looks like it was taken by Falaw again and it'll be second and goal. Well, you look at this Howard offense, uh, one of the best rushing offenses in the country, 204 yards a game, uh, number 23 in the FCS. So they can really, really run the football. And showing it today, Hornets struggling to stop it. Second and goal to 10, Newton. Fakes it and keeps it, and he probably should have handed it off that time. Hornets read that one perfectly. Great job there by the defense, Chris. Well, and that's you've seen the adjustments at the upper level. Uh, a lot of times the, the, the design of the read option was to have one guy try and cover or block two guys 
You know, they would leave one man unblocked and make let him make the decision whether he goes at the back or the quarterback. And a lot of times now that unblocked guy just goes at the quarterback, and you saw it there, and they let the guys up front try and handle the running back. Lozano blowing up that play. Third and goal at the 15, 125 remaining in quarter number one, folks. Newton drops, looking right, takes it. He's going to run, nowhere to go, gets inside the 10. And he's going to be knocked out of bounds at the five. So decision time for the Bisons and their coach, Mike London. That's that's the undisciplined rush right there. You rush upfield and you leave Newton wide open lanes to run. You have to stay disciplined, have to keep the pocket intact uh, because when you don't, he's going to hurt you. So looks they like do kick it here. It'll be about 20, 22 yards. Looks like they're going, they're going for to go it. for it. Mike London. Faith and his freshman uh, quarterback, Chris. Defensively, you have to guard the end zone. I'm surprised to see this. Bison smell blood. Option. Newton keeps it. He's going to be stopped. Great job there by the Hornet defense. No gain on the play. Hornets will set up shop at the five, and they knew that was coming. Yeah, I don't like that call at all. You've been, uh, you know that you're, the Hornets know you're going to run the football, and they know you're going to try and make something happen with Newton. I just think that that was a very predictable call there. I'd have taken the three points. And it's not like it was fourth and one, fourth and two. Five yards is a lot to gain, especially when the defense has a pretty good idea of what's coming. I don't like the the, uh, the decision to go for it there. Good job by the Hornets to take advantage of it, make a play, and get off the field. I guess London was thinking if he doesn't get it, they have to go 95-plus yards to get six or at least you know, a good amount of yards to get a field goal range for Nzidi, but McDaniels in the offense have another opportunity. The game's not over. A lot of times I'm in favor of going for it down there, but you're up 10 nothing. To me, you have a chance to really to really start to bury the Hornets the more. Even if it's just a field goal, you start tacking on points, you start to really uh, discourage the, your opponent. And it looks like Aline gets it in. Let's see what they did there. Might have lost some yards, Chris. Yeah, just, again, with the offensive line being as banged up as it is, guys shuffling around up front, the Hornets really struggling to block. And uh, Howard bringing the pressure, and McDaniels, I, again, I, you got to see some screens, some pitches outside, try and really slow down that pass rush, uh, and the rush in general. If you don't, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. So second and 13 at the two, shadow on our own end zone. McDaniels rolls left, throws it in the end zone, and that was a dangerous throw. Knocked up in the air and would hate for that to be returned. Howard's just pinning their ears back right now, bringing the pressure from everywhere. You've got to bring in some extra guys, come in with a two tight end set and uh, try and give McDaniel some time uh, because right now he's on the run at pretty much every single play. So we have third and forever, third and 13. Ball at the two-yard line, eight seconds remaining in quarter number one. Want to slip for anything here. Definitely don't want to go backwards because it will be a safety. McDaniels in the gun. Let's see if they go max protect here with two backs in the backfield. Howard's going to probably try to bring pressure. McDaniels is going to throw it. Has a man. It's going to be caught. What a play. Completed to Trey Gross. Good play. Good read there from Jack McDaniels. What a throw. Good decision from Coach Carter. Brings in the two running backs. They both stayed in to protect. McDaniels fan man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. Threw it up and got a big play. I like that decision there, and, and again, you're trying to slow down this pass rush. That's a way to do it, especially when they're going to go man-to-man -man on the outside. And the fans love the big play. What a beautiful throwing ball by McDaniels. Yeah, into the first quarter and, and chance to get some momentum, uh, but that was that was a good throw. Obviously, you can make all the reads you want, but you've got to cap it off and you've got to make the play, and he did, and a good catch on the outside by Trey Gross as well. So uh, good play there, but you got to build on it now. You know, you're, you're still down 10 to nothing, so... You, know, you can make as many good plays as you want, but you've got to capitalize and uh, you've got to take advantage and keep this drive going. Kind of wonder why you don't see more plays like that from the Hornets. I know they've had trouble blocking, but as we see on the field, uh, big donation to the athletics of Delaware State. It's always good to see that. But uh, first quarter, what were your thoughts? Well, you like, I think. I think there are things to like, but up front really is where they're getting beat right now on the defensive and offensive line. The defensive line has shown some some good plays. They've gotten some pressure on, on Newton when they've tried to throw the ball, but uh, the the strength of this Howard team is, is the running and their run blocking, and they've got an hour after this Dell State defensive line. They're going to have to make some adjustments, try and get off some blocks quicker uh, when Howard runs the football. and. And offensively, again, we've talked about it, the, the, the offensive line for the Hornets is pretty banged up. 
So they're kind of working through some things, getting through it. They're shuffling things up. And, uh, you know, you've got to find what works. There we saw it, well, you know, with the max protection. So very curious to see uh, as this game goes along, if the defense can keep them in it, what kind of adjustments they make on the offensive side to try and get the offense going. Well, they'll flip sides. And McDaniels and the offense will start at the 25, first and 10. So now I'm going the opposite way. McDaniels takes it. They're looking for the screen. Wisely doesn't throw it in. Wow, he pays for it, but gets about a yard on the play, Chris. But good job he didn't throw that. That was just very slow developing on the screen pass there. Normally a wide receiver screen is just a quick catch, look out, and throw it. McDaniels wanted to do that, but things developed slowly on the outside there. McDaniels made the right decision to just tuck it and run. And unfortunately, like you said, he paid the price, took a big hit. Second and nine. Ball on the 26, just on the way here in quarter number two. McDaniels will come out in the eye formation with two receivers to his right. It's going to be a handoff left. Aline gets it, has room, still running to the 50, 40. One man giving chase. He's a blur to the 20, 15, 10, 5. He's going to be stopped at about the two yard line. About the one yard line. Aline, he's a blur, Chris. He's quick. He can hit the hole, but you got to give credit to the offensive line. I mentioned the struggles that they've had, the injuries they've had, but they got a big push, a big hole, and a lean hit it in a flash. First to the second level, and that's a tough, tough man to catch. Good play there by number 17, Trey Freeland, to slow him down because he was going to score. Well, here comes the Hornet offense at the one. Got to punch it in here. West in the backfield. Let's see if they give it to him. They do. West is going to be stopped immediately, and just as we give them praise, Chris, the offensive line gets pushed back there and a loss on the play. Well, I think Howard knew the run was coming there on uh, first and ten or second and nine. Uh, there's kind of, you know, some guessing going on there, but first and goal from the one, I think Howard knew they were running it and they were selling out to stop it. Uh, and that's, that's the kind of thing you've you got to stay unpredictable a little bit. I know I said run, 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 but you've got to kind of keep them off balance. And there, like I said, Howard sold out to stop the run. If you go play action there or, or just a quick fade route to the corner of the end zone, you've probably got man-to-man -man coverage and an opportunity. Second and goal with the three. McDaniels looks over to the sideline from Coach Carter for the play. He's going to give it to West again. No good. Gets about a yard. And, Chris, you said run, run, run. They must be listening to us up here in the booth because they're sticking to it. Well, this is where having an offense like Howard does is really, really beneficial because, yes, they run the football, but they run it in so many different ways. Even though they're running it, it's very unpredictable. For the Hornets, it's a very predictable run offense. They're going to hand it off, especially when they get in the I formation or single back under center. Uh, they're going to hand it off. They're going to try and run it right downhill, and it becomes much easier to stop. That's why, like I said, I would have liked to have seen on first or second down go with a play action or, or just a fade pass. Now third down and two. Curious to see where they go. There's the fade. He's going to go back. Has a man. It's going to be knocked away at the last second. Great job there by Murray knocking it away. Looks like he was trying to get the ball over to Gross again, Chris. Probably would like to see that on first or second down. Yeah, first or second down, I'd like to, you know, especially on first down, you've only got a yard to get. It's going to be really kind of uh, uh, unpredictable there. Um, you know, on third and three, it becomes more predictable, something you can more foresee coming, especially when you come out in the shotgun. And uh, good play there on the outside by the Howard defender. And now the Hornets going to take the three. Well, 19-yard attempt for Nazidi. Let's hope he keeps the streak alive. It's up. It's good. Nazidi gets the Hornets on the board. But, wow, Chris. Coach London goes for it at his own five, doesn't get it. Hornets get the big play by Aline. A big third down, then a big run by Aline. Don't get six, but they get three. Uh, I think you don't like to get six there. Uh, you know, you have the big play from Aline, a lot of momentum. If you're able to score that touchdown, you can really build some momentum. Instead, if you're Howard, you got to feel good. Hey, one big play, but we were able to stop him, hold him to three points. Uh, so, you know, if you're the Hornets, those are the opportunities you have to cash in on. You've got to score touchdowns. If you get around the 30, 25, 30 yard line, you'll take the three points. If you get the ball to the one, you got to be able to punch that in. Nine yards, 93. Nine plays, 93 yards. So a big play there by Aline. And you see they have a good running back core with Aline and West. And West and, and 
unfortunately, it would be even better if they had Mike Waters healthy. Obviously, they don't. So if ifs and buts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a wonderful Christmas. But <laughs> they're still able to make it work. They're able to run the football well. Uh, again, it's just now about finding an offense, uh, finding a passing game, a more consistent passing game. Uh, if they're able to do that, this could be a good enough offense because I think this defense is really good. They didn't show it last week against North Carolina A&T, but I think this defense is is uh, is one of the better ones in the MEAC. Uh, you know, so it's it's you have to play complementary football, and the, the offense has to help out the defense in some ways, and they were able to do that there. Uh, that, that drive started on the five-yard line. So to, even to get three points, you'll be happy with that. Obviously, once you get to the one, you're thinking touchdowns, but a good response, good opportunity now for the Hornet defense to keep the momentum. You can get it back to the offense. You can really put yourselves uh, in a good position. 12-10-3 with 12-18. A lot of time remaining in this game, Chris, and we've seen with the Hornets and the Bison before, these games usually come down to a few plays in the fourth quarter. Well, we've seen this with Coach Carter uh, over the course of the past few seasons. They, in spurts, play very, very good football. Uh, if you were, I know you remember the game last year against Monmouth. <laughs> and speaking of remember, it's going to be a great return by Ezzard. Wow, getting up past the 25, and it looks like he was pinned inside the 20. Yeah, that was, that was a very good run there by Ezzard to escape a few guys. But uh, that game against Monmouth, I mean, they were down 27 to nothing at halftime or 20 to nothing. Came back, I believe, tied the game before Monmouth was able to win by a touchdown. Uh, but they play very well in spurts. Uh, you know, it's a matter of now finding that consistency, and I know Coach Carter is trying to find that and get these guys to play good, play well together for four quarters of football. Well, first and ten for the Bisons. Newton and off has been sitting for a little while, Chris. Let's see if they're cold. Newton takes it, fakes it. He's going to throw, has a man. They're going to call that complete. So we'll get a gain of about eight on the play. Oh, they're going to call it incomplete, looks like. Didn't have control, looks like he went to the ground. You'll take it if you're the Hornets. But that's that's that off soft yeah. coverage. You're going to get underneath throws if you're the if you're the Bison. you got to take advantage of it there. Tried to, but a drop. Fortunate play for the Hornets for one first down, so second and ten at 38. Newton. It's going to be a handoff. He's got his man running left. It's going to be taken in, and it's going to be a big game by Wortham. And looks like it's going to be a first down for the Bison. So get the stop on first down and give up the big run on second down. Well, again, the offensive line getting a good push up front for Howard. They, you can tell these boys love the run block, and most offensive linemen do because it's an opportunity for them to go downhill, be road graders, and just push push uh, defensive linemen around. And uh, Howard's been doing that so far. And we got a Hornet hurt on the play. And another injury. Looks like it was Dallas coming out of the game here. So we'll get Newton. And the offense with another first down, 11.35 remaining until halftime. Byron, I like these jerseys, but it's a lot harder to see the numbers on them. <laughs> Newton's going to go back and throw it away. Why that's a, that's intentional grounding. There's nobody there, and he was still in the pocket. And the that's got to be intentional grounding. On the side, looking There's for it. And there it is. Flat. It must have hurt you, Chris, because <laughs> between you and the Hornet coaches, someone was like, I oh, know they see this. Coach Carter was going to lose his mind. if they, He was pointing from the minute that ball was thrown. There was nobody in the area. Good call there by the officials. Uh, you like when, when referees are able to talk amongst each other and get the call right because that's obviously the most important thing. Newton may have been better off taking a sack there, but there will be a loss of yardage. It will back him up, and there will be a loss of downs as well. So we'll call it second and 19 at the 40. Newton will keep it. Excuse me, it's going to be the Falaw. He runs outside past the 50 and gets to about the 46-yard line. So getting most of that yard is back on the penalty. Yeah, well, uh, they they really bit on the uh, on the fake. Thought Kalen Newton kept it. Obviously, different didn't. And Phil Yall able to take advantage to get a big gain. Phil Yall mentioned early and often in his offense, and we'll get looks like second and ten. So pretty much getting most of that yards back. Excuse me, third down and ten. Newton looking runs. It's going to be stopped on the play. Hornet defense led on the play by looks like Cost. 
D lineman getting a sack. There's a disciplined rush. You keep him in the pocket. He tries to break free, and there are no running lanes. That's what you can do when you have a disciplined rush against a running quarterback. And it'll be fourth down, and Coach Carter congratulates his defense as they leave the field. Doing he did a really good job forcing intentional grounding and getting a stop on third down. Well, they take advantage of the intentional grounding penalty. Uh, also, uh, you know, fortunate intentional grounding comes with a loss of down. So, uh, big play there, big opportunity and a good stop there from the Hornet defense. Lebowski will punt. And that's going to be almost blocked. And Great job there by the special teams. And now you're going to get a flag. And it's going to be roughing or running into. That's a tough one. And that's the last thing the Hornets needed on fourth down. But, I mean, you don't all, you don't want to sell out for it all the time because those kind of things happen. But they were on top of that punt. That was really, to me, it looked like an easy block. That, that should have been blocked. Running into is only five. So it'll be a first down and wow. So running into the kicker on fourth and five. Running into the kicker is not an automatic first down, but the yardage here gave Howard the first down and and, and again you can't be mad at him for his aggression because he was there and it should have been blocked and unfortunately it wasn't. And now the Hornet defense gonna have to step up again. So it'll be first down for the Bisons. They'll spot it at, looks like, the 41. And like you said, Chris, not automatically first down, but with five yards to go, they're going to give him the first down. Five-yard penalty, so just keeping this drive alive. And the Hornets are just trying to get off the field. And, and that's tough for a defense because you, you kind of check out. You get the stop. Okay, we're good to go. You come back to the sidelines, take the helmet off, get a breather, and all of a sudden you've got to head right back out there. So first and 10 for Newton in the gun. Two guys to his left. And he's going to give it off to his back. And he's a scat back. He gets out quickly. Looks like he's giving a scat, the receiver. And they move him around a lot. You're going to see different guys, different looks in this offense. And uh, Howard continuing to mix it up for this Hornet defense and make it difficult. So Scott on the carry, as you see, Newton loves his gun. Look with two guys to his left. Well, look at the two—the difference between the two guys. Scott, you just mentioned a scat back, and Wortham's a big-bodied back. As you said, Chris, a diverse offense, and we got another completion in the first down, and Newton throws it to Murray for first down. Well, there's the second and short, and that off coverage is just going to get picked apart all day on on. On plays like that, second and four and less, you play off coverage like that. You've got to be quick on the jump when a guy makes a quick turn like that. And the Hornets weren't. And now defense continuing to struggle. First and then at the 27. Newton hands it off to Wortham. He's going to be stopped immediately. No gain on the play, Chris. I think one of the things you're seeing, the de defense, uh, the play calling, they're kind of guessing right now when Howard's going to run. You saw a lot of guys coming. They, they blitzed there off the edge, had some free ru free runners into the backfield. I think they're guessing when Howard's going to run and trying to send as many men there and uh, and wrap up this Howard offense. And and that that's great when it works, but when it doesn't, then all of a sudden you've got nobody at the second level to make a tackle. So second and 12 at the 29 for the Bisons. Newton drops. He's going to throw. Looking for someone. Ball tip. Intercepted at the 20-yard line by the Hornets. Taken in by Brock Nichols, the D-back. Taking it in. Great job there by the D-line with the pressure. Hornet football. And very surprised there. Howard, no threat of a run there. No play action. Anything like that. That was a straight drop back pass from the shotgun. And the Hornet defense got after Newton. Newton tried to step up and uh, got hit as he threw it. And those are always dangerous throws. And it was dangerous there. And the Hornets take advantage, get a huge, huge play from the defense. Well, pressure bust pipes. And Chris, you talked about it. Newton had seven interceptions coming to this game in six games. There's interception number eight. Well, look, honestly, I hate to throw shade here, looked like his brother on Thursday night. I mean, Cam faced a lot of pressure, got hit a couple of times, and threw some wayward passes that were intercepted. Kalen faced the same problem there, and he's faced it a couple of times. It happened once earlier. He threw a ball up on the first play that fell to the ground. He had the intent grounding and now that so this Hornets defense when they're able to get pressure Kaylin Newton struggling to respond with it so 
Hornets got to take advantage right now when uh, when Howard drops back to pass and uh, continue to get that pressure. New quarterback in for the Hornets. Keenan Black, Chris, he's going to get the snap here. Uh, let's see what happens. First and 10, 24. I, again, I don't think this is something Coach Carter wants to do, but you, know, you have to create a spark. Black and the gun. Going to have some motion. He's going to throw it. He's got it to West. West passed the 20 to the 30. So a short game. So early on, you see the difference in offense with Black in going to the gun and a lot of motion getting to the playmaker. Well, I mean, one thing you notice there, you know this Howard defense is used to facing an offense uh, that uses motion before the play. West went into motion, and the defensive lineman quickly runs out to the left and follows uh, Nyfeast West, knowing that that's probably where the ball is going to go. Positive gain on first down, and we'll take it. Six-yard gain, ball in the 30. Now Black comes back to the gun. We've seen the Hornets in the gun a lot today. West in the backfield. He's going to get the handoff. Runs left. Has room. Big gain on the play, and he's going to be close to a first down, and they'll give it to him, and he's moving the pile, turning those legs, Chris, and you got to love the way this kid runs. Good, the push, good push from the offensive lineman in the pile. They're able to push West for a first down. And so the Hornets mixing it up already with Keenan Black in, and Black's a more mobile guy than uh, than. Uh, Jack McDaniels is, so it opens up just another small element to this offense. First and ten, Black in the offense moving. Two positive plays. Black is going to look around, look to his play from the sideline, and they're going to stay in our formation. Black going to give it off to Aline. We, last time he touched that a big gain, Aline will take a positive gain. Looks like a short gain of about four. Things getting chippy a lot after after a lot of these plays. You're seeing some pushing, some shoving, some jawing between these two teams. Definitely heated robbery, and you see it here. So they'll give him a gain of three, second and seven, six fifty remaining, quarter number two. Ball on a forty-two eye formation for the Hornets. Black, the new quarterback, and as I said, Aline will be his back in the backfield. They're gonna go to Aline. Runs right, cuts. And gets to about the 45, so it'll be a third of manageable, Chris. Able to able to keep themselves, you know, with a chance here in the down and distance. You got third and four. And uh, curious to see the play call here. This is certainly an area where you can run the ball. I mentioned Black being a mobile quarterback. See if they try in something. I would I'd like to see a rollout here, give Black the option if it's there, run for it. If not, see if you can get a pass over the middle or out near the sideline to get a first down. Third and fourth to 45. Black in the eye formation. Aline is running back. Black's going to roll left. He can run like Chris said. Shakes it. Throws it anyway. And not the wisest throw. Almost intercepted by the Bisons. Kind of wondered what he was thinking there. But it will be fourth down and Bisons will probably get the ball back. I'm surprised Keenan Black got up after that hit. He was just left wide open and uh, after the throw and got hammered. But, uh, I mean, again, that's you can see Keenan Black, he doesn't look like he's very comfortable yet throwing from the pocket. And you see him roll out when he didn't really need to, tried to roll out to the right, and nothing was there. Howard had him spied. But, you know, again, I would have liked to have seen, you know, um, a, a play-action rollout on that kind of play. Martinez to punt. Ezzard deep. It's a fake. He's got a man. It's going to be completed. And he breaks the tackle, past the 30 inside, the 25 towards the 20, completed to Selby. What a play call there. That took some cojones, Chris. I mentioned he was uh, MEAC Special Teams Player of the Week earlier, didn't he? He might be going for Offensive Player of the Week, too. <laughs> what a play. I mean, I didn't see that coming. It's a fake. Well, that's a, it was a great design because, again, eye candy, pre-snap eye candy. They send four guys out to the left. Howard doesn't know what to do. They send all these guys out to follow him. Where does the throw go? To the right. And that's eye candy. That's you know. Uh, that's you have to be disciplined. And when you're not, you're facing a special teams group. They weren't really sure how to respond. And it was a great find, a great throw by Fidel Romo Martinez to find Selby open and, and deliver a really good throw. That was you expect that out of your quarterback, not your punter. But that we're, was on the money, on the run. We're in Halloween season, pulling out the bag of tricks, and just like that, a penalty is probably coming back. Get a little antsy. Fall star probably. Get some momentum, get a little excited, and they get over antsy and a false start. 65. Fall star on a play by Bradford, one of the linemen. This O-line's had a pretty tough first half, Chris. Ball the 25-yard line. But still in field goal range. 
Uh, this is, again, another opportunity for them to get points, keep this game close going into halftime. So first and 15 at the 25. Black will be in the gun with West to his left. Selby, who just caught the fake bottom of your screen, he has one-on-one -on -one coverage. Black throws, has a man. It's going to be caught for a touchdown, Hornets. What a throw. Great throw, great catch. Trey Gross getting nasty with it for the six points for the Hornets. That was a big-time throw from Keenan Black right there. And the Hornets with an opportunity, Chris. Who would have thought to tie this game up pending the extra point from Nazidi? Well, I mentioned Coach Carter doesn't really want to switch quarterbacks, wants to have a one-quarterback system. Maybe might have found that guy to play quarterback. Keenan Black executed that drive very well. Obviously, they had the fake punt, which comes in huge. And that, that was a gutsy call right around midfield to go for it. And uh, we got Hornet, offense, Hornet offense able to uh, to make it pay off. And we got, you know, you mentioned it, a tie game. Here as we get late in the second quarter at homecoming, this is about as big a crowd as you're going to see at Alumni Stadium this year. And uh, Hornet offense, or Hornet football team, keeping them around. Seven plays, 76 yards, 846, including a fake punt. Now, Chris, we got a game, 10-10, brand new ball game, hitting in the halftime. As we said, these games are always fun to watch. Well, you have to tip your cap to the defense right now. It was 10-0. Howard had the ball. It looked like this game could really get away from Howard. And I talked about that going for it on fourth down That's there the turn from Howard. It turned the momentum. Dell State ended up getting the field goal, get another stop. Now they get a touchdown. I told you I didn't like the call. I'm a smart guy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, I, I felt like that was an opportunity for Howard, again, to just kind of continue to just throw a little bit of dirt and continue to bury Delaware State. Dell State makes the stop, and just like that, it's a 10-10 game here late in the first half. And now the Hornet defense is feeling really, really good about themselves. Well, the crowds come alive. Not the prettiest day outside, but the folks in Alumni Stadium are feeling that play in black. You said a spark. I think he's the whole outlet right now. Well, I mean, if you talk to some football players, they, they really wish they had more people at their games. And these people, you can see it. They want to get into the games. When you give them something to be excited for, they will get excited. They'll cheer you on. We see it at basketball games. Whenever the basketball team's in a close game against a really good team in the MEAC, they get into it. And they got a big crowd here tonight for homecoming. And the crowd getting into it. And uh, Hornet, Hornets with an opportunity to feed off of this momentum now. So Nazidi will kick it deep. Looks like we have Falaw back deep for the Bisons along with Ezzard. Ezzard will take it up past the 20 to about the 25, runs to his own man. And Newton in this offense, they've been kind of cold, Chris. Defense yeah. of the Hornets going to good job. Yeah, well, this is I think this is a very, very big drive for Howard uh, because I think both of these teams feel like this is an opportunity for them uh, to get a win. Uh, Howard certainly comes in here thinking that this is, you know, we beat UNLV on the road. We can certainly come here and get a win. And Delaware State, the last time we won a football game was against Howard here at Alumni Stadium. So this is a big drive. Can Howard kind of turn the tide, get themselves going again on offense, or does this Hornet defense stay hot and continue to shut down this offense? 429 remaining, first and 10. Newton hands it off to Falaw. Falaw is stopped immediately. Great job there by the Hornet defense. Stopped immediately and met by Devin Adams, the linebacker, filling in for Harris. Doing a good job. I think they're becoming more disciplined as this game goes along, seeing that the eye candy things before, you know, pre-snap are not always what they appear. And you saw movement out to, uh, to Newton's left, and they run it right. And the Hornets stay disciplined and make a play. So second and 10. 10-10, four minutes remaining. Hornets get a stop here. They got plenty of time, Chris, to get this ball back with two timeouts. I'd be curious to see how they approach that with Keenan Black in at quarterback. Newton, no time. Scrambles left, gets away. Hold. There's going to be a flag on the play. This could be coming back as Chris was yelling out hold along with the rest of the crowd here. So the defense of the Hornets, pressure not only gets sacks but creates penalties and things like that. They're really shutting down the passing game right now for Howard, and, and I mentioned it. As good as they are running the football, make them one dimension. Make them have to run the football. You can really start to hone in on it, and they're doing that right now. Sean Smith, the lineman. Not good when you hear your name called as offensive lineman 90% of the time, and you see it right there. So it'll back the Bisons up to the 17, and 
Let's see what the Hornets do here. They've been dialing up the pressure. Let's see if they keep it up. It was second and 20, and, and these are at times have been the plays that the Hornets have struggled in, the intentional grounding the last drive. Uh, Howard ends up getting a big gain on second down. So this, these are the plays you've got to make. Make it third and long. Newton looking for someone. Nowhere to go. He's going to get knocked down, but he gives it to Falaw. And we got another flag. Falaw still running to the 50. And we'll see what the flag is on the play. Let's see if it's another hold. Hornets pretty confident that this one's coming back. Uh, but that's that's where Kalen Newton can be dangerous. If you don't get pressure right away and it kind of comes in waves one at a time, he can make a miss, and all of a sudden you've got a guy running wide open. The defense can't, or the back end can't cover forever, but it certainly looks like this one's coming back, everybody making their way back towards the original line of scrimmage. So another hold on the line of the Bisons. We got a legal man downfield. On the Bisons, looks like that was on Howard Ward. So five yard penalty, second down for the Bisons. Well, I mean, you have a, those plays have a tendency to happen a little bit more often on scramble plays. Uh, offensive linemen trying to get downfield and find somebody to block, and uh, you end up getting a little too far. Second and 25 at the 12, 3 10 remaining till halftime. An exciting first half, tie game, 10 all. Newton back to throw, has time this time. Gets it to his man. Bounces off of a defender like a pinball. Going to be complete to his receiver. Looks like that's Kyle Anthony, folks. And now a third and more manageable for the license. Well, when you're in zone coverage, especially in, in, a, in a second and 25 situation, you'll take a short completion. But you got to wrap up and make the tackle right away. Hornets allow some yak there. And all of a sudden, third and eight, you'd like to be there, but you'd like it to be a little bit better after second and 25. Third and seven, they'll call it from the 30 to 35, remaining till halftime. Hornets still have two timeouts. They'll bring pressure. Newton back to throw, has time. Rolls right, looking. Has a man, it's going to be incomplete. Looking for Anthony again. He's looking for a flag. He doesn't get it. Looks like Jihad Nabauer on the coverage. Great job. And Bisons will definitely like they're going to punt here as Newton wants to stand the field. few things. Great blitz pickup there by Howard Hornet. Hornets brought the blitz. Howard picked it up, gave Newton time. Number two, great coverage in the back end because as much time as there was, wasn't really anybody open. And I'm a little surprised to not see the flag there. It certainly looked like there was some contact. Hornets will take it, but it certainly looked like there was some contact there uh, on the receiver in that throw. Lebowski back on the punt. Last time was almost blocked, but we got to run into the kicker call. Let's see what the Hornets do here. And almost again, great penetration there. And we'll get a fair catch wisely from the Hornets and got a net will get it for the Hornets safely and securely and Keenan Black a blackout last drive as he got him six points Chris what did you like what you saw from I mean give credit to the fake punt also <laughs> the fake punt but it was it was really all about that touchdown throw from Keenan Black that was a big time throw over the shoulder drop it in a bucket right in your receiver's hand heading into the end zone it was about as good a throw as you could ask for uh, again I I I think you have to tailor the offense to your quarterback. McDaniel's a less mobile guy. You want to see more pocket passing from him. But Keenan Black, I'd love to see him get out of the pocket. And I think Black's still on the sidelines. So it's yeah, it is. it's going to be Jack McDaniel's back end. What do you have to be thinking here? What are the team thinking? I mean, you're going from one quarterback to the other. Maybe, maybe Coach Carter lied, and he really does want to do this two-quarterback thing because after Black leads a touchdown drive, you'd think he'd stay in. <laughs> McDaniels gets it to West, and that's a wise decision. West breaks off a tackle and gets up to about the 38-yard line. A good game on first down, though. He's tough to bring down. I mean, you see, he doesn't look like the biggest guy all the time, but, I mean, every time he's got the football, somebody's bouncing off of him. Uh, it's, it's very rarely that the first guy is bringing down Nifees West. Well, they have a nine-yard game, second and one. It's 5'11", 200. Not easy to bring down, Chris. 150 remaining, so the Hornets in the two-minute drill here. West in motion. A lean to the left. McDaniels rolls, has time, nowhere to go. Wisely takes it to self. Let's see where they mark it. This could be a first down, Chris. All they needed was one. Yeah, good job by, there by McDaniels. Make something out of nothing. I, I thought that was going to be a, a sack or, a, or best case scenario, get back to the line of scrimmage. And uh, instead, he's able to pick up a few yards. That's going to be the, fir the first down on the play. And just enough, one yard. Moving no change for the Hornets as we're approaching 118 remaining. McDaniels 
ball tipped, and West wisely lets it hit the ground. And that could have been a dangerous play before the half. Trying to get McDaniels going, get him some short passes like that, like I talked about earlier. Um. So we'll call it second and ten at the 41. 111 remaining for the Hornets. McDaniels back in the quarterback after Black leads the touchdown. Two timeouts remaining. Hornets can still use the whole field. We got a flag on the play. Looks like it might be a false start, Chris. I think I think McDaniel's in a quarterback, the better thrower, better pocket passer, and obviously with uh, with as much time left, you have to move a little bit quicker. You have to go through the air. And I think they trust McDaniel's a little bit more there. So that's why you see him in a quarterback right now. But uh, offense struggling to get going. Something when he's in. Uh, that's a that's a few false starts now we've seen against the Philadelphia team. Quarterback. Not sure if there's a miscommunication or something going on. Second or third. So So as the refs try to get the game clock situated here at 118, Chris, still plenty of time to move this ball. Yeah, but I don't think you can be worried about the time right now. Your most important worry has got to be picking up this first down. So we'll call it second and ten. McDaniels back to throw. Has a man complete. They picked it up. <laughs> and a first down for two. Sula got it net. First down, his first reception, first target of the day. That's a guy they really, uh, to me, they have to get more involved. Get got an A to football. McDaniels in the hurry up. Throwing deep. Back to Gross. And met by two Bisons and incomplete. But I don't hate the play there. No, I mean, and that was a tough, tough one to complete for McDaniels. Hard to make an accurate pass. Had blitz right in his face. Um, but, yeah, first down, you know, I like the, the opportunity to take a shot. But you're starting to creep into uh, to Wisdom's field goal range. He made the 47-yarder last week. Uh, so you're starting to get closer to that. I, 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 to me, I, I'd be playing for three right now. If you can get a big play and get a touchdown, great. But if I can get three points and a lead at halftime, I'm ecstatic if I'm Coach Carter. Ten all, second and ten. McDaniels back to throw, and he short hops, grows. More, more pressure. Pressure by the Bisons there, like you said. Howard, Howard knows that, that uh, Delaware State's throwing the football, and they're pinning their ears back, getting after McDaniels, trying to make them complete quick passes. And uh, they tried to there, but just, just a little bit too slow developing, and McDaniels throws it into the dirt. And now you got third and ten. Theme of this first half has been pressure from both sides. So third and ten to the 45 Hornets. Still with those two timeouts, 54 seconds remaining. McDaniels in the gun, has a lean, and West. One to his right, one to his left. Gross bottom of your screen. He could go back to him. He does. Gross on a slant. Complete. Breaks the tackle to the 30. And he gets up to about the 33-yard line. And wow, if you don't know the name, Trey Gross. You're going to know it today, Chris. He's wearing 81. The T.O. The T.O. shop at Dell State. Tim My Brown. goodness. My goodness. <laughs> Anquan Bolden. Who else? He's been outstanding in this football game. And you just see the mismatch. He's a big guy. He has the size, the ability, and the first hit doesn't usually knock him down. Yeah, no, I mean, and, and he's he's been able to go up and get the ball, too. I mean, he, he had uh, he had this fade route over here to McDaniels on the long third down. He caught the touchdown pass. He had that play. They threw the fade route in the end zone to him on the third down where they ended up kicking the field goal. Uh, so they really like him, and they really like his ability uh, in tight spaces to be able to go get the football. And, uh, I mean, boy, has he shown it today. He's been awesome. Freshman, 6'4", 185. I wish I was 6'4". <laughs> <laughs> Definitely could do a lot with that size. <laughs> and you see it there. He's on the field. Probably had a good week of practice, and they're finding him early and often. And him and McDaniels have had some good plays in this game. Don't forget the play in the shadow and on end zone. And then the play just now. One third down to get the first. Time out by the Hornets. Still one left. 47 seconds, Chris. Plenty of time. McDaniels takes it. Looking for him again. A little double move on the outside, and 
wisely doesn't throw it, and he'll go positively forward for a gain of about one. And another timeout last one by the Horns. Gross and Godine can be a really, really good combination. Gross, the big 6'4", you mentioned it, the big body guy, and Godine, a smaller, more of a slot receiver guy that can be uh, can be really effective in, you know, underneath plays, trying to just grab a few yards. I think they can be a really, really good combination for Coach Carter if they use them right. And as you said, last time out by the Hornets, got in that, got to get him involved to see what he can do. And Gross, you might have some here, both young, got in that a sophomore and Gross a freshman. So out of this timeout, Chris, second and 11 at the 30, what are you looking for with still 40 seconds remaining? In the, what seems like a long first half. Right, well, so you're at the 30-yard line, which you do the math, that's a 47-yard field goal. So you're right on the edge of, uh, of Nazidi's range. I believe they're out of timeouts now, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you're out of timeouts, 40 seconds. To me, you're kind of in a tough spot here, second and down, uh, second and 10. So you're in a tough spot as far as going for the end zone. To me, if I'm – I'd probably try and run the ball here, try and get four or five yards and uh, go back to the line, throw it. If you get the first down, great. If not, kick the field goal. I think that's where I would go if I were Coach Carter, but we'll see. I mean, you know, I think they're going to stay aggressive, so I wouldn't be surprised to see a throw here. McDaniel's thrown it pretty well on this drive. If they can get one-on-one -on -one coverage out there on 81 on the outside, uh, I think I think you got a good shot. But, Howard, you can see the second safety really shaded over the top of Trey Gross. Second and 11 at the 30, 40 seconds remaining. McDaniel's back to throw. A lean left alone. He's going to get out of bounds wisely. Clock will stop, and they'll be able to reset. That's huge. That's huge. First of all, McDaniels to get rid of it, not get sacked. And a lean to pick up five yards and get out of bounds. Now you've got an opportunity to pick up the first down, and you're definitely inside Wisdom's field goal range now. They forget about a lean out of the backfield with Gross making those big plays. So underneath is definitely open. Third and eight, 35 seconds. Plenty of time for the Hornets to take a couple shots here. McDaniels back to throw, looking deep. It's going to be caught. What a play. The body control. Tiptoeing to Ron Selby. Aaron Rodgers couldn't throw a pass better than that, Chris. That was a beauty. The receivers came to play today. Selby's, Selby, I mean, he made the play on the fake punt, and he makes that. We've, we've talked about gross. We know how good God and A can be. The receiving core came to play for the Hornets. So a quick spike by McDaniels, wisely ball at the one. Wow, what a play there. And look at the body control, the ability to catch the football. Perfect throw, perfect catch. Well, this is where I mentioned that timeout that they took on the defensive side of the ball early in the game. You'd love to have that timeout in your back pocket right now because then you could, the option would still be there to run or pass. Now you've got to be leaning pass. If they're going to run it, this is the only down they can run it because if you run it on third down, you can't spike it on fourth. Second and goal at the one. 20 seconds. McDaniels option. A lean. Oh, he loses the ball. It's recovered by the Bisons. It's going to be a touchdown the other way for the Bisons. It's going to be Anglin. Salby chasing him. He gets in. Ball knocked away, but they're going to call it a touchdown. Elijah Anglin. 99 yards back through your TV screens and breaking the hearts of everyone here at Alumni Stadium. Chris. I hate the play call. It's, what it, was it, that? It's easy to say now, but so many things can go wrong on an option. And I just, I, I don't get the play call. I don't like it. Especially McDaniel's not a mobile guy. Just way too many things can go wrong on an option like that. And that obviously the worst thing that could have gone wrong. I wouldn't have even guessed that would happen, but you could certainly see a fumble recovery. Uh, too many things that can go wrong. Only one thing goes right in that situation. I don't like the play call. I would have liked to have. I personally, I'd have taken two throws at the end zone, make sure Jack's careful with it, either throw it out of bounds or throw a touchdown. Um, and instead they go with an option and it, it goes back the other way. Extra point is good. Extra point is good. We're still trying to catch our breath here. 17-10. Wow. Hornets had a chance to take the lead going in the half, and they would get the ball coming out of half. All, all that momentum you had, and it's gone just like that. Uh, again, it, it, it's easy to be, you know, hindsight's 20-20. But, again, I just 
there has to be some level of conservativeness. Look at this, and you have to say the worst-case scenario is we get three points here if you're Coach Carter. And uh, instead, they go with a play that, again, a lot can go wrong, a fumble, uh, a bad snap. To me, I'm getting under center. I'm lining up Trey Gross on the outside. If he's got man-to-man, -man, we're throwing it up to him, and he's going to make a play. If not, you know, maybe you get Godinette slipping up the middle on a quick slant, something like that. Uh, you know, but, I don't know. Again, easy to say now, but I, I, I think that was the one of the last play calls I would have went with in that situation. And uh, instead of being up at halftime, which it looked like they were certainly going to be ahead, now you're behind a touchdown. 17-10, six seconds remaining, so we'll probably get a slip kick here from Lebowski. And wow, Alumni Stadium is stunned. And worst time for a turnover. We get a slip kick taken by Aline. He's going to take it up past the 20. And Aline will take it, and that'll be how the first half ends. Bison 17, Hornets 10, homecoming 2017. Chris going into the locker room with his coach Carter after the Well, I mean, you got to be a, you shouldn't be down by a touchdown right now. That's certainly the the, the thing you you know you can say. You tell the guys, listen, we're in a good position to win this game. We're going to start the ball with the second half. We've got momentum going on offense. Let's keep it going. Defense, keep doing what you're doing. You've been awesome since the first two possessions. The Hornets were the better team in the first half, really, after that first two, those first two possessions. And unfortunately, a bad play call late and poorly executed. I mean, at the end of the day, you have to put some blame on the players. You can call any play you want. If it's, if it's executed poorly, it's not going to work. I think a combination of poor play calling and, uh, you know, a poor execution, and all of a sudden you find yourself behind. But certainly a lot of things to be encouraged by. Execute in the second half, continue to do what we've been doing, and this is this is an, a football game that we can win. Well, 17-10, defense only giving up 10 points. We'll be back for second half action. Enjoy the halftime festivities. It's homecoming. Hornets trail to Bison, 17-10, WDSU TV. Happy homecoming, Delaware State, and congratulations on 126 years. Good afternoon, Mr. Drum Major, Miss Drum Major, if you please bring the crowd to their knees. Come on, Delaware State, put your hands together for Miss Jordan Washington from Charles Herbert Flowers High School in Springdale, Maryland. Come on, put your hands together. Watch the back bend.
Northwest State. Round of applause.
you thought the halftime shows were great. After the game, the Delaware State and Howard bands, along with our guest bands, will continue the show during their fifth quarter performances. Hornets, welcome home. And the great governor, John Carney, here to say welcome back to Delaware State University. Thank you, Dr. Williams. One, two, three, four. We are back halftime in the Hornets Nest here as we're getting ready for second half action here as the Hornets trail to Bison 17-10 at halftime. And Chris, as we look at some of the first half stats, what stands out to you as we get ready for second half kickoff? Well, Kaylin Newton, 77 yards rushing. That's a pretty uh, pretty big number. Bryson Aline, 79. Obviously, he had 70 of them on the one, uh, the one big run. But, you know, they've sacked Kaylin Newton twice, uh, forced the interception. They haven't turned the ball over yet, uh, so you know they, like I said, they've definitely done some good things. We're going to start the second half, and uh, an opportunity, obviously made the big mistake at the end of the first half. So if they can get this game back to tied, see what happens the rest of the way. A flag on the play and return taken by Selby. Let's see what the flag is. A lot of flags in the first half as well. Got an illegal block in the back to start the first, and corners are going backward already, Chris. Uh, well, uh, ball's going to start at their own seven-yard line this drive, Will. So, you know, we've seen them, we've seen them uh, score. You know, starting at their own five, so s certainly doesn't feel like the end of the world. And I, it looks like. Keenan Black's going to be back out of quarterback. I was curious to see how Coach Carter uh, approached that. Both of them led scoring drives or near scoring drives in uh, in their last two possessions of the first half. So the Hornets will start with Black at their own seven. And West in motion. It's going to be hand off to Aline. Aline looking for Aline. He's so little he hides under those linemen and gets about two on the play. So Keenan Black Keenan Black. Black brings the read option into uh, into play 
a lot more than Jack McDaniels does for the Hornets. So going to see that run a lot more. Uh, and I, I think Keenan Black's going to do a lot of damage running the football. If he can, if he, you know, stays in the game, they continue to get him reps. I think he'll do a lot of damage running the ball. So second and eight, Black looking to throw. Gets it over to Selby and, excuse me, Hannah on the reception, it looks like. So, as you said, on the first half of this game, the receivers have come to play early on. Well, that was dangerous. I was just talking about he's going to throw, he's going to run the ball for a lot of his yards, and he throws it right there between, right in between two defenders. Very dangerous pass, but it was accurate, and Selby made the catch, and, uh, Somebody from Howard is down. Looks like uh, Dominique Smith, I believe, on the Bison side is down with an injury. And one minute into the first half here. Excuse me, second half. And the Hornets get the first down. Yeah, good good throw again by Keaton Black. And, again, very curious to see what this offense looks like. We've seen mostly uh, Jack McDaniels at quarterback for the Hornets uh, this season, at least here at, at Alumni Stadium. So kind of curious to see, um, you know, what they look like with with Keenan Black, at quarterback, you know, how the, how the running game looks really because, we, you know, we talked about they have to run the ball well. So with Black and with a mobile quarterback, nine times out of ten, that uh, improves the running game altogether. And, uh, you know, so curious to see that and how they throw the ball. So, you know, a lot to look at here with Black in. And, and I think Howard's got some adjustments to make because Delaware State really, really moved the ball much, much better as that first half went along. As you said, the one player, Trey Gross, really stood out. We heard he was really getting his first big action of the game, Chris. Yeah, and and Trey Gross as well. He, he, was, he was awesome in that first half. It'll make life easier for Keenan Black throwing the football if Trey Gross stays in this game and continues to have the impact that he did in that first half. So first and ten for the Hornets at the 18. Black, the quarterback, in the off formation. Has West with him. Gives it to West to his right. Cuts back and makes a man miss and runs up. Looks like to about the 21-yard line. So West, as you said, tough to bring down. Usually takes more than one defender. I think you see it from him and from uh, from Bryce and Aline. Both of them are very, very good as they approach the line of scrimmage uh, on a run and approach the point of attack at the line. They're very good at finding the hole. And even if it's just a three, four, five-yard gain, uh, they're very good at picking those up when it doesn't look like there's much there. Second and five at the 23. Our formation again is going to go back to West. Same run play looks like. Runs right. And if it works, stick with it. West cut back a little bit there, saw a hole, and a good vision he has as well, to, you know, to be able to find the holes and hit them quickly. And you know, again, can they've done a much better job as as the half has gone on of putting themselves in third and manageable and converting. So just on the way here in the third quarter, it's going to be third and three at the 31. They're going to be another handoff to West, and let's see where they spot it. And it looks like they're going to give it to him. And they're going to move the chains first down. So three straight runs, result first down, Chris. Well, that was an instance I didn't really like the play call, but it worked out. Uh, I think you got to – I really think with Keenan Black, it really opens up play action rollouts. We haven't seen, I don't think, any of them in this game, whether it was McDaniels or Black. But Keenan Speed, if you can get him play action out on the edge and he's able to either find somebody open or take it himself, I think you really open things up. And they're going to stick with the run. And Aline was the runner this time, but he is met on the play by the Bisons. They read that one, and Brian Cook getting to the backfield. You just said it. Brian Cook read that all the way, saw the formation, and uh, just played on instinct there. They're going to run it again. They sent him from that side. He creeped into the line of scrimmage and quickly got in the backfield. And, and uh, again, I didn't like it on third down. I really didn't like it there on first down. You, you're just you leaving yourself open. Uh, when you continue to do the same things, if, again, if you play action roll out there with Black, you're gonna you're gonna catch him off guard. Pressure coming from the Bison, second and thirteen. Black drops drops the throw. He's gonna take it himself. Runs up field, gets past the thirty. We got a flag on the play. So a hold on Charles Wallace that'll bring the back ten yards for the Hornets. If they just kind of look out of sync right now uh, so far in this in this first drive. I know they had the three runs for the first down, but uh, it just doesn't. It looks kind of clunky right now. 
And, uh, again, I think, I think the play calling is partially to blame for that, really not putting these guys in situations to make themselves successful. And after the first now, now all of a sudden you've got a second and more than 20. 17-10, Bison's lead just on the way here in the second half. Black is the quarterback. We've seen McDaniels and Black today. Black looking to throw. Has a man. It's got an A. It's got it to the 40. It's a first down close to it. Looks like they're going to give it to him for the Hornets, and they're going to move those chains. Well, you said they didn't get them more involved. There you go, Chris. Well, good good read there from Keenan Black. Dropping back, great blocking up front. Got an A with just a slant, you know, a post route over the middle. And Black found him, saw the middle of the field open. And that's that was for as big of a gain as it was. That was about as, as an easy pitch of as a pitch and catch as you could ask for. First and 10 of the 40, going to be a read option. Black keeps it, looking for a block, breaks the tackle, and he's going to go down eventually. And great pursuit there by the Bison defense, Aaron Walker on the stop. One thing I've always wanted to see, when, when you call a run play like that and the quarterback keeps it, he still has the option to throw it. So if you're running and there's three guys from the other team running at you, throw it out of bounds. You're out of the pocket already. You're not going to get an intentional grounding call. And instead of second and 14, second and 15, it's second and 10. I, you know, I'd be curious to, you know, to to pick a quarterback's brain or a coach's brain as to why that kind of thing doesn't happen. Second and 14 and 36. A lean in the backfield. Yeah, it's going to go to a lean. He loved that run to the right. Cuts up field and not much there. And the Bison defense is pursuing early and often. Aaron Walker, another tackle. Continue to try and go those stretch plays out to the right, and it's not really working so far for uh, for Delaware State. Got to see a little bit more diversity out of this offense. So it'll be third and long, third and 11 at the 39. Hornish trail, 17-10. Black and the gun. Gross. At the bottom of the screen. And pressure coming from the Bisons. Let's see if the Hornets offensive line can take. We'll see if they do. They do blitz. Black scrambles. Not much. Elijah Anglin on the tackle there. And it's a sack. And that will be punting. And here comes Martinez. Uh, Howard, I, I, um, that's a good play call there to send the blitz. Delaware State really hasn't shown. I mean, I know Keenan Black's there, but they blitz from the outside. They keep him in the pocket. And uh, Black, obviously not a guy with great pocket presence uh, just yet anyway. He's still young. He can develop it, but he doesn't have great presence in the pocket. And a and good punt there by Martinez. They're going to mark it out, let's see, up towards the 10. They're going to mark it out at... Looks like at the 10-yard line. So first tip for the Bisons, we'll get our first look at Newton's half. Making a, making a case to be a two-time special teams player of the week today. Fidel Romo Martinez has been awesome. Definitely special teams. Something, as you said, has seen improvement with Nazidi and Martinez under Coach Carter. Now the Bisons still do have to go a good amount of field, but the defense of the Hornets is more disciplined. Yeah, well, I mean, this is this is really where that, that end of the first half comes in to, to really hurt you. This game, again, we talked about it. The worst thing that should have happened at the end of that first half was a 13-10 to 10 lead for the Hornets because wisdom pretty much going to be automatic uh, with where the Hornets had the ball. So that, uh, and instead now you're down 17-10. to 10. Now the defense feels a lot more pressure than they should to make a stop. And uh, you could very easily see them come out very well, could be playing tense. And uh, you can't do that against Kayla Newton. They've got to be freewheeling and dealing on the defensive side of the ball, play loose, play aggressive. When they did that, they were very good in that first half. I think the defensive approach has got to be the same. And uh, for, for Howard, it's tough because they're built to run the football, and the Hornets have really taken away the passing game from them and have started to hone in now in the running game. And... They've really started to uh, to do a number on this Howard offense. I'd be curious to see the adjustments to the passing game. I think the passing game is going to be the key for Howard in the second half. First and 10 at 10 for Newton. Fakes it. Drops the throw. He's going deep. Has a man. It's going to be knocked away. And it's going to be caught on the rebound. What a play. A juggling act and a reception by Kyle Anthony Chris. Wow. 
Looked like Julian Edelman in the Super Bowl. That was a play. We get the replay here, and that was just Newton throwing in triple coverage, knocked away, and his receiver just comes up with the play. And they're going <laughs> to hurry up and man. snap it, and he's got a man wide open, and that's going to be a bison touchdown, it looks like, and it is. Quick as a hiccup, this bison offense. Looks like it was... A completion from Newton. Looks like he got. I think it was Lemonier. Lemonier again. And he's hurt. And he's down. And just like that, in 19 seconds, Bison scored two plays. I mentioned the passing game was going to be key for the, for Howard in the second half, and certainly catch a break uh, on the first play to uh, to score the touchdown. 13 then, seconds. I mean. That's what happens. You get two big plays. Uh, you know, when you go hurry up, they caught the Hornet defense sleeping on that second play. And, uh, I mean, it was just uh, part of it, obviously, it's luck. But I think the Hornet defenders would tell you they have to do a better job on that first pass, you know, of knocking that ball away. That, that kind of thing can't happen. And then uh, a, a little bit of discouragement. Howard caught him off guard. And, uh, and that was easy pickings for the touchdown. And, and now all of a sudden, again, End of the first half, you should be winning. Now all of a sudden you're fighting an uphill battle pretty much this entire second half, down 14. Still, uh, you know, eight, almost eight and a half minutes left in the, in the third quarter. And, uh, you know, when you're in trouble and, and you don't know who your, who your quarterback is. Drive to drive, you don't know who's playing quarterback. It's hard to get in a rhythm for the quarterbacks or the offense. And uh, I just I think that this has really become an uphill climb for them. Definitely an uphill climb, extra point pending from Lebowski will try to make it 24 to 10. And a top 10 worthy play there by Lemonier. And as you say, reminding of Julian Edelman in the Super Bowl. I mean, it, it pretty much did. The coverage was there. There were two, three guys knocked the ball away and it lands on somebody's leg. And there it is, right, you know, right in, right in your lap for a catch. And before the Hornets could get themselves together, they're back to the line calling another play. And just like that, another touchdown, Newton yeah. to Lemonier. Yeah, well, that was very good aggression to me by the uh, by Howard, the play calling to, to quickly hey, get to the line. You know, because you're discouraged if you're the Hornet defenders, especially in the secondary, and uh, you kind of fall asleep there and, and, and you leave a man open. It's easy to miss a guy. And they did that in Lemonier, wide open down the sideline. And... Uh, and again, now you're down two touchdowns, and you have your work cut out for you in a big way. Extra point is up and good. And we got a 24 to 10 lead for the Bisons. Chris, that has to demoralize the defense, as you said, watching those plays happen. Yeah, and I mean, it's demoralizing, too, because you watched what happened at the end of the first half. And I hate to keep bringing it up, but it's still there. I mean, it, it just happened. It literally was the last play from scrimmage of the first half where you know where a touchdown is scored on a 99 yard fumble recovery so it's still there and i said it it's an easy way to to play tense after that kind of thing happens on defense because you're trying to keep continue to play well keep the score you know where it is and uh, and you play tense next thing you know you get a bad break you get a little discouraged and howard catches you off guard and you, you tip your cap to howard they took advantage of it you know they did what they had to do but, uh, you know, again, a, a poor play call, poorly executed way to end the first half. A little bit of bad luck to open up the second half. And all of a sudden, you go from should be leading to down two touchdowns. Down two touchdowns, uphill battle for the Hornets, as you said. And let's see who the quarterback's going to be, as that's a drive to drive thing, it appears, with Coach Carter, who looks like he does like the two quarterback system. A lean back deep to return. And again, I. Who's going to play quarterback? I don't know who's going to play quarterback this drive. And that kick stays. Thought it might have run out of bounds, but it's going to be returned. Looks like it's going to be first and ten. And they'll spot it around the 21, 22-yard line. Uh, down 14 points, excuse me, down 14 points, Chris. What can you do to give any momentum back in this game? Well, to me, I would have Jack back in at quarterback. I think the passing game is better with him in. Um, of course, they're going to go with Keenan Black because I say that. 
but uh, I, you know, I just I think the passing game's a little bit better. Uh, I know you scored the touchdown with Keenan on the field, but you also had the fake punt on that drive. So I just think things look a little bit more in sync with Jack on the field. Um, but again, the running game's going to be better with Keenan in. So you know, they both got their uh, their advantages. Black dropped the throw, has a man, is gross, and just overshot him. See to me, I think Jack hits that throw. As you said, just a bit outside. It's hard to overthrow a six-four guy, but you saw it there. And and again, I mean, with Keenan, Keenan's strengths are, are running the football, the read option, um, and they continue when he's throwing the ball. They're keeping in, keeping him in the pocket. I want to get him outside, let him use his legs. Second down, and speaking of legs, they're going to be a run, and he is met immediately. First guy there, Isaiah Flood again, Chris. And it really looks like Howard made it made it a point at halftime that that these these runs these I formation single back runs are not going to work against us in the second half. We're going to put guys on the line. We're going to make them beat us on the outside. And other than Trey Gross, Hornets have not really been able to beat uh, beat the Hornet or beat the Bison outside the hash marks. So 7:40 remaining in the third quarter. Third, 10 at the 22. Third and long. And Black will be in the gun. Gross at the top of your screen. I see if the ones can convert it. Black rolls right. Has time. Has a man. And he takes a hit, but it's caught again by Godinette. As he is rocked on the play by Quentin Hill. But a good job there finding Godinette. Well, see what happens when you can get Keenan out of the pocket. It's not designed. But he gets himself out of the pocket, rolls out, and you've got to keep eyes on him because you know he can run, and it gives you an opportunity. Somebody breaks free and gets open. I just I, I don't understand. I don't know if they're not in the playbook or what, what the deal is, but I just, to me, I would much rather see more, you know, more plays outside the pocket, get, get Black on the edge, and let him work where, uh, where his skill set fits. So first and ten. Black in the offense, moving the ball. Black has gross, and he overshot him, and he had a room, Chris. I mean, Second I mean, time to try. You, you got to hit that. I mean, I, you know, and I understand I've, I've made it pretty clear his, his strengths are outside the pocket, but you've got to be able to do something from inside the pocket, and there was a play, you, you know, you just you have to make. You've got gross. He's a big target, um, and he's open, and you, you just you can't miss that throw, especially not trying to dig out of a 14-point hole. So second and ten. Pressure coming from Howard. Blitz picked up perfectly. Black has room. Runs. Get past the 45. To the 50. To the 45. To the 40. Has blockers. Gets out of bounds at about the 41 to go to market. And there are those legs of Black. Well, you said the blitz pickup was what was key. Bryce and Aline did a great job there to, uh, to Keenan Black's right. Saw the blitz coming beforehand off the corner and uh, picked it up. Called it out. And uh, Black made the adjustments. They picked up the blitz, and then Black able to take advantage and uh, and get a big gain up the middle. So good play there, and doing a good job making things happen on this drive. Six minutes remaining. First and ten at the 41. Black is going to hand it off, and it's going to be carried. And it looks like we have a new. That's going to be a lean. Excuse me. Oh, gets the carry for about two. And, I mean, every play, you've got seven, eight guys in the box from Howard. I just don't think that they're willing to let this, this ground and pound style beat them. Um, they're, they're, again, they're going to continue to try and make Delaware State beat them with their skill players, beat them on the outside. 24 to 10, ball in 38. Three-yard game for Aline. Black moving the Hornets on to the Bison side of the field. Black takes the snap, looking, looking right. Going to throw right to Gross, has him, caught, touchdown. He's a big time player. He's a nasty one, they call him Mr. Gross. He's making a name for himself on homecoming. His second touchdown of the day, and the Hornets are back in this game. Extra point away from being down a touchdown. Chris. Second touchdown from Keenan Black as well. Keenan Black been big time uh, with some throws to Trey Gross. And this is what I'm talking about. Yes, your strengths are outside the pocket, but when you're in the pocket and you've got a man, you've got an opportunity, you've got to deliver. And he made up for any mistake he made earlier on that drive. Missed a couple of throws I thought he should have made. That one 
as good as you can make it. Tom Brady couldn't have done it any better himself. Black, a big time throw. And you mentioned it, Hornets within a touchdown now. And now the defense maybe can take a deep breath and play loose, play fast again like they were in that first half. Seven plays, 78 yards, three minutes, three seconds. Gross is a walk on Chris. Not a scholarship player. And you see, he may be earning a scholarship yeah, after this game. Yeah, well, we didn't see him very much. Uh, this is really the first real playing time he's gotten this season. <laughs> and boy, talk about earning more PT. That young man has brought it today. Uh, you know, you gotta you gotta tip your cap to the coaches bringing him in and uh, giving him a shot. And he's been everything you could ask for and more. We got a bison down in the end zone. Brian Cook and Payne. And Cook's been pretty good on the outside for Howard so far in this game. So this would be a big loss, and it doesn't look good. He has still hasn't uh, gotten up. He looked like he was in a lot of pain following the play. And, and again, still uh, still on the ground down there in the, in the right corner of the end zone. Looks like they're lumping him off, and we'll have the extra point pending. Twenty-four, sixteen. Go ahead, Chris. Well, I was just going to say we're going to get another look at uh, this touchdown in black. A clean pocket, great blocking up front, and Gross just over the top got behind his man. Looked like there was a little bit of a push there, extended that left arm to give himself some more room. Uh, but again, you can get away with it, do it. And there's you see that clean pocket, Black able to deliver a strike, and Gross on the other end been making plays all day long. And uh, again, Hornets. Back within a touchdown and uh, back, you know, with an opportunity for the defense to play a little bit looser, play a little bit faster, and uh, get a stop. Still with five minutes running in this quarter and a whole fourth. Still a lot of time to go, folks. Kick is up. Kick is good. And Zidi, he is perfect. 24-17. Bison's up by seven, but momentum may be shifting, Chris. I, I said that, uh, that I thought Jack McDaniel should have come out and play quarterback. I, I take that back. That was... <laughs> that was the uh, the uh, the less of me coming out, but you know again, I mean that's Keenan. If Keenan's going to throw the football like that, he's definitely the better option uh, for this team because of his ability to run. He made a lot of plays with his legs, but at the end of the day, you got to be able to make plays from the pocket at any level. Your quarterback has got to be able to do to just be a threat in the pocket. And he missed a couple of throws earlier in that drive, but when it mattered. He made the big play over the top and, uh, and delivered a strike the second time he's done that today to Trey Gross. So tip your cap to the young man. Tip your cap to Coach Carter for sticking with him. And uh, now, uh, you know, I, I think he's got to be the quarterback the rest of the way for this football game. Um, you know, just in my opinion, with the way he's looked, he's, he's, he's going to play with confidence now. Uh, the offense certainly feels like they've got a better chance with you've got an offensive line that's got as many injuries as they do if you've got an athletic mobile quarterback that's going to be a big advantage so i think there's become a lot of advantages uh to playing him and especially with them you know being closer in the football game now so nazidi will kick it deep to the bisons who take the ball Hazard back deep to return for the Bisons. And that is going to be a touchback. So a good kick there by Nazidi. No return for the Bisons. It's pretty close to that left side. We're a little unsure here if it was going to go out of bounds or not, but. So it'll be first and ten, Newton in the offense. So as you said, Chris, defensively, the Hornets have been pretty well, only really giving up 17 points. Yeah, and, and I mean, and, you know, we talked about the last drive had a lot to do with a bad break giving up that touchdown. So, you know, got again, got to get back to being confident and play fast. And speaking of play fast, Newton goes quick to Ezzard. He stopped immediately or not. He's going to run back the other way. He has blockers in front of him. Ezzard past the 40. He's got speed. He runs back kicks. He's a blur to the 35. And wow, the Hornet defense has to be kicking itself. Chris had him dead to rights. 
You got, I mean, you got to make that tackle right there. I mean, that's a two, three-yard gain and uh, just unable to wrap up and finish the tackle. And Ezard credit him, made a big play and, uh, you know, and turned it around on the Hornets. But, I mean, you, that's, again, you just you have to wrap up. You can't let him go. Uh, even even if you can't get him down, just hang on to him while, you know, till reinforcements come. And we got a Hornet down on the play. Oh, Chris, stoppage in play. Hornet defense give up that tough first down play, but what have they done well, you think, since the first drive? Defensively? Yeah. Well, defensively, I mean, they've been, again, they've been aggressive, and the defensive line has really been uh, has been strong. They've gotten after the offensive line, and uh, you've seen some more quick strikes from Howard here in the second half. Um, trying to negate that, that pressure up front from this Hornet defensive line. But but I think they've won the battle up front on passing downs, and uh, and I think they've guessed well, done a good job sending the blitz, sending some extra man men uh, when Howard runs the ball. And so they've done, you know, they were they were really pretty effective in that first half after those first two drives. First to 10 at the 35 for Newton in the Bison offense. Newton had time, delivers a strike to his man inside the 20. It's going to be a completion. Two looks like it's going to be Kyle Anthony on the reception. And, and just as you say, the defensive line unable to get pressure back there. Newton able to stand in the pocket and deliver a strike over the middle. So that'll be another first down. Ball will be spotted at the 16th. Newton with the handoff. And a flag on the play carried by Devon Johnson, but that will be pending the penalty. Oh, oh. We get a hold. The offense of the Bison. Looks like it's on oh, Aaron Hutchins. Oh, so it'll be first and 20 at the 26. Four minutes remaining in quarter number three. This is the opportunity for the Hornet defense at the D line to, to, to send some pressure, get after, um, get after this, this Howard offense. Newton in the gun with two guys to his right. Throwing to the end zone. Has a man that's going to be caught for a bison touchdown, a pitch and catch. And he goes back to his friend, Kyle Anthony. 26-yard touchdown pass, Newton Anthony. Back shoulder. I think it was Kyle Taylor on the coverage. He came up lame. You see him limping back there in the back of the end zone. He came up lame halfway through the coverage. Uh, I mean, there, it's number 40. Garfield Heslop, you see, I don't know what happened, but just back there on the coverage, he was unable to make any kind of play. He gets hurt halfway through it, and uh, just more bad luck for the Hornets. And extra point for Lebowski is up. It is good. Bison offense strikes quickly, as we said. 31-17, they lead the Hornets, and just like that, they erase that touchdown, and the Hornets just scored. Yeah, I mean, again, just more bad luck on the defensive side. Uh, you know, you first play of the drive, you don't wrap up, and uh, you end up giving up a big play, and then there on the touchdown, you've got a man in pretty solid coverage. It was a good throw from Newton. I don't know that uh, that Heslop would have been able to make a play anyway, but um, but you had a man there in coverage, and he ends up coming up lame halfway through the play while the ball's in the air. About the worst time that you could uh, that you could end up getting hurt, but Heslop just unable to uh, to make a play. Well, this offense moves quick, Chris. Three plays, 75 yards in just under two minutes. And we still got about three minutes left in the third quarter. Well, offensively, they've already scored more points this half than they did uh, in that first half. So they, they've made some adjustments, and they've gone to the air more, and they've really beat Delaware State through the air, um, which they were really unable to do in the first half. So Aline will be back for the Hornets. And let's see if they stick with Black when the offense comes out. Helene, excuse me, Selby will take it up. Up past the 20, has some blockers, cuts up field to the 30. And it looks like that's where the Hornets will set up shot. 
Excuse me, Hannah on a return. Looking at some other MEAC scores, we got Morgan up 48-20 over Savannah State. North Carolina Central defeating Garner Webb 17-3. Uh, North Carolina, excuse me, Norfolk State losing a half to 16-7. North Carolina A&T beating FAMU 21-7. And South Carolina State and Dune Cookman just underway as we get a look at some of the scores from around the MEAC. So they'll stick it with Black Chris. I guess they had no choice there. Yeah, not really surprised. I, I don't, again, I thought Jack McDaniel stood, should have started the last drive, but uh, Black comes in, leads a touchdown drive. You can't really... Can't really go away from him. Black drops the throw. Looking deep. Has his man. Gross. He grabs it right out of the air. And wow, Chris, this kid Gross is putting together a highlight real day in his first real start. Yeah, he's he's been phenomenal. This is just that wasn't even it wasn't the, the best throw. It looked like it was a little bit high. And Gross comes up, really snatches it out of the defender's hand almost, and uh, and makes a big time play. And Gross has to be approaching the century marker in receiving yards if he hasn't broken it already. He's almost single-handedly kept them in this game, which is hard to do for a receiver. First and 10 at the 41. Black drops the throw. Has all day running, throwing, short hops Gross. And it's going to be incomplete. But you got to love to see that Gross making well, the, all the plays. They had the zone coverage underneath, so Black went to run, thought he had room. And then all of a sudden there's two, three linebackers sitting there in zone coverage waiting for you. And, uh, and he had a man. He had Gross open and just missed it, threw it in the dirt. So it'll be second down and 10 at the 41. Black in the gun. We've seen him mainly in the gun. And we got some movement up front. And that'll be coming back false start by the Hornets. Ball start on the offense. 81, number 76. Five yard penalty. Repeat the down. Looks like a false start was called on Tyreek Booker, the tight end. So, second and 15. That was spotted at the 46. And Black gets it and the gun. Dropping the throw, going deep, over through, overshot his man. Looks like he was trying to hit Kawan Kali on a play. First target of the day. I think you've got an argument there for an illegal contact penalty well beyond uh, the, the five-yard marker of allowance. And uh, I believe that was Brian Cook out there back in the game on the other side. So third and long, third and 15. The 46. Let's see if Black and the offense can convert. What if they go back to Gross? He is at the bottom of your screen. He's looking over there. He is going to throw it and double coverage. It is knocked away. Looking for a flag. Looks like it was intended for Selby. No flag on the play. And they'll bring out the punting. Yeah, throw in the double coverage. But, I mean, that's what you get on third and 15. You're trying to pick up the first down. Uh, and it looks like... I mean, I said that I thought that the run game would be better with Keen and Black in, and they really barely ran it since, you know, that the first drive of the second half. They haven't ran it that much. They've been trying to do it through the air. So Martinez will point Ezzard back deep to return. Remember, they did make one last time, and now getting the Bisons all out of position. They don't know what to do. And it's going to be a punt. Yeah, I think he had an option there, and that was uh, – a bad punt. We've got a flag on the play. And we got some extracurricular activities afterwards. There's got to be a flag on that. A Hornet player, he got his knee rolled up after the after the takedown. And I don't see any flags for an unsportsmanlike conduct on that on that play. Which Damon is Atwater Stevens, the Hornet, that's down on the play. And like you said, Chris, chippy game. You saw it on that one. Yeah, well, I mean, you had uh, you had a guy from the Hornets blocking after the play, blocking late, and then the Howard player got tired of it, so it looked like he kind of brought him down, and they end up rolling up on uh, Stevens' leg. And now Stevens, for good reason, is in a lot of pain. Uh -oh. 
12, kick it team. 15 yards be added to the end of the kick. I'll keep the ball. So that 15 yards will be added to an already bad punt, Chris. And the Bison will have a really good field position to start. Yeah, but again, I can't, I can't believe there wasn't a flag called on this play afterwards, whether it was offsetting uh, unsportsmanlike conducts or, or what the case, you know, whatever you want to call it. But just to, to call nothing when a guy gets, when two guys hit the ground aggressively well after the play concludes is, is, is beyond me. And they'll get the ball right at midfield, Chris, to start moving right to left. Newton in this hot offense, two touchdowns their last two drops. And a chance to really uh, probably put this game away. I don't see the Hornets getting to 38 points. Newton, screen. Ezzard at the 50, runs up field and taken down. A high tackle, gets about five. And as you see there, screens work just like the runs a little bit. Yeah, I mean, the coaches will tell you that the screen's an extension of the running game. Uh, and, I mean, that's that's – a product of this this off coverage. I mean, the, the Hornet de defensive backs are a good six, seven, eight yards off the receiver. Newton hands it off to his receiver. Falau, he gets to the 40, and that's going to be close to another Bison first down. And it is a first down for the Bisons. They'll spot it at the 37. And got a stoppage in play. Dude in this offense stand primarily in the gun, usually with two guys to his right or to his left. One moves in motion, and it's going to be Newton dropping the throw. Nowhere to go, running left. He can do that, folks. Gets to the 30 and knocked out of bounds up towards the 25, and another first down for Newton. Well, Chris, once he gets going and running, it's a first down and more. Yeah, but you see the difference from the first half to the second half. The first half up front, the Hornets were getting all kinds of pressure into Newton's face, and they were really making it difficult for him to throw. Now he's got all day to sit back, and when nothing's there, he runs, and there's nobody there. So first is into 25 for Newton and the Bison offense as they're moving. And it's a read option. Newton keeps it to the 20. They'll mark him at about the 18 as we approach one minute remaining in the third quarter. And the Bisons are moving. It's an opportunity, as Chris said, to put this game out of reach heading into the fourth quarter. Yeah, I, I don't know how much adjustments that uh, that Howard really made other than, hey, offensive line, you guys need to kick it in gear and, 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 and start blocking, and they have. And it's really, really made a big difference. Ball on the 18, Newton in the gun, as he's been all day. He is taking a hit, but he gets the ball off, and it's going to be a touchdown for the Bisons. Desmond Wortham. Newton hung in there to take that hit, and it was worth it because he got six points for his yeah. team. I don't think he had the ball. I think they fooled him with a fake. Newton took the hit, and Newton didn't even have the ball. What a fake there. Defense sold it out on Newton, like you said. Rocked him, but it was no avail as they use this running game. A lot of motion, a lot of movement, and the offensive line of the Bison is just taking over. Yeah, they've really started to flex their muscle. We talked about how good of an offense they were running the ball, but it's really been the passing game in this second half, and they're really the biggest flash from the run game that we've seen from them in uh, in the second half. But they've thrown it really well, and uh, and they've really started to take over this football game. They've been winning this game in the trenches, and the Bisons lead 38-17. As Chris said, they're trying to put this game out of reach. And we got a five-play, 50-yard drive in two minutes, five seconds. They don't hold the ball long, Chris, because they score in bunches and quickly. Yeah, and I mean, and, and now it's just it's an all-uphill battle, and it all feels like it goes back um, to that play at the end of the first half, the option that was taken back the other way. I mean, you've got to think this could be worst case. You know, it's a Howard lead by a touchdown, you know, maybe 10 points, something like that. But it's it's not you know, this deficit, this 21-point deficit that they're facing now. 
Um, just I really think it got into their heads. It discouraged them a little bit. And then, uh, you know, to come out to not score on the opening drive and then Howard score in two plays, it just, uh, I just think it felt like an uphill climb all the way for Delaware State after that happened. And, uh, and it showed. Down three touchdowns as we head into the final seconds of quarter number three. And Hornets are going to have to get moving with just over 15 minutes remaining in regulation to try to come back from three touchdowns. Lebowski's kick is going to be taken in at about the 10 by Aline. And Aline gets a block, has some room, gets up to about the 37, 38, they'll call it. And first and 10, and looks like Coach Carter stick with black, Chris. Yeah, I, guess, I don't, isn't very surprising. He's, he's thrown the ball pretty well, better than, uh, better than you would expect him to. And uh, you know, and obviously, again, I'll mention he's got the he's got the legs, the ability to run if things break down. Uh, but I think the score being what it is, and, and as effective as he's been, I think you just give him the opportunity to finish this one out. As you said, Chris Black will probably be the quarterback to finish this game out. Haven't seen a lot of West here in the second half, Chris. But trailing is hard to run the football, and it'll go to West. It looks like on a swing pass. West goes upfield, and he is knocked down immediately. And that is a big hit on the play. Devin Rawlins knocking out West there. Loss of a yard, it looks like. And just really struggling to find a, a way to uh, consistently move the ball. Black rolls left, pressure, throws across his body. They got an net, and it is short with four seconds remaining in the third quarter. So this will be the last play, and it will be a third down for the Hornets, third and eight at the 40. Pressure again by the Bison line, offensively and defensive lines just taking over. Yeah, they've, they've really taken it in the teeth here in the second half. Uh, you know, Keenan Black, I mean, he had a man open, but that's a tough throw to make, you know, across your body, like you said, just not an easy uh, an easy throw to make, and he, le and he left it short. But, um, but this is going to be tough, and it's if it's going to happen, it's going to require a score and a quick one here on this drive. That's the end of the third quarter, 38-17, Hornets Trail here on WDSU TV. Well, Chris, it's hard to pick up some positives when you're down 21, but what can the Hornets possibly do here down 21 with 15 minutes left? Well, I think I think if Coach Carter's got a, a gadget play, something to – Something that can really catch this defense off guard and get you a big chunk play. I think you got to bring it out here and try and get some momentum, get the crowd into it. So the full quarter isn't over yet. It was still four seconds, as I said. So we will have one more play in this quarter. So ball on the 43rd and nine. Last play of the third, fourth coming. And we got a flag on the play. Five yard penalty. Charles Wallace. Call for the flag. So third and 14 at the 35. Four seconds remaining here in the third. Black looks for the play. Looking for something here positive heading into the fourth quarter for the Hornets down 21. 31 17 as we've seen a barrage of plays by the Bison offense. Black rolling, throwing, has got a net, but it's short. To Norvell, fourth and fourteen, and that's the end of the third quarter. And do the Hornets go for it here, Chris? I don't. I don't think you can go for it. Defense hasn't played uh, well enough, confident enough. It's fourth and fourteen. I think you have a better chance of something happening happening on uh, on special teams than getting it on this on this down. And and I just Keenan Black's been very inconsistent throwing the football. You've seen some some throws that have been outstanding. 
and uh, and some other ones that you just you think that uh, a guy should be able to make a Division One quarterback should be able to make, and he's just missed them. Uh, so. So down 21, 38, 17. Black's the quarterback now. Chris down 21. At least you can try to build momentum with another home game next week. Yeah, I mean you gotta you gotta defensively. I think you have to find something, you know, positive to take out of this second half because again, you know they've they've really been taken to the woodshed here in this second half. Howard's done pretty much whatever they wanted offensively in this second half. So I think you gotta you gotta try and you know get some confidence. But right now it just. It's just tough because when you're in a close game, it's homecoming. You feel like you're going to have an opportunity, um, you know, to win the game, and then uh, and then it goes away just like that, and you're you're quickly fighting uphill. It, it's very demoralizing for this team. Martinez with a punt as it returns it, looking upfield, has some blocks. Jukes a man, cuts up field. He's quick as a hiccup. Has some blockers in front of him. Cuts up past the 45 to the 50. Wow. Ezra just fun to watch returning the ball. Good return there from Ezra. Just didn't look like there was really anything there to start with. And he ends up turning it into a very good return down to uh, right around midfield. And as good as their offense has been, they continue to get good field position. And, uh, and they're taking advantage of it. Well, Chris, the team that likes to run the football, they can definitely – Sit on the ball here, run the ball, and let that clock wind down with the 21-point lead and look to go back to D.C. with a win. Yeah, they're, they're built for the four-minute offense, this kind of situation. You see Ezard making several guys miss, slipping through a, a little crease there and, uh, and able to get a good game. But, but you said it. They're built for this, for this, you know, the four-minute offense um, and to really close the team out. And, uh, you know, Hornet, Hornet defense, I mean, you just got to, again, you got you to gotta look at the defensive line guys and just try and, get back to what they were doing in that first half, getting that good push up front. Newton still throwing, and it is a reception and taken in. Ball almost knocked away, but Phil y'all with the reception. And I guess, like you said, an extension of the running game is a screen game, and they'll take that, stay in bounds, keep that clock moving. Fortunate that that wasn't intercepted or, or at least knocked out of Phil y'all's hands. So it'll be second down and four. So a six-yard gain on first down. And just on the way here in the fourth quarter. Newton in the gun. It's going to be a fake. Yeah, they're still throwing. Has a man wide open. Taken to about the 20, looks like. And we got a hard tackle there. Kyle Anthony with the reception. Helmet knocked off in the process. Looks like he gets to about the 27, 28. And you just, you continue to see Kalen Newton just dropping back and then they're just, the passing game has been excellent for Howard in this second half. I said it was going to be the key to their offense and it's it's been their entire offense. Philly Isle on the carry, still on his feet, has daylight up inside the five. And they found a little crease, and they opened it up. Phil Yaw, he's a receiver, but he runs the ball well too, Chris. That's just a matter. You can just tell this defense is is, is gassed and, and demoralized, uh, you know, with the way this game is going. And uh, it looks like it's going to come back with the flag. But Personal foul, tripping, offense, number 63, 15-yard penalty. Repeat it down. Gerald Wright, the culprit there. So first and looks like 25. So it'll be a fake and a throw completion. Gets it to his receiver, tackle from behind. Jordan Scott on the reception. And this offense isn't letting their foot off the gas, Chris. Yeah, very surprising to see them throw it as, as much as they are. They just continue to uh, to work the ball through the air, uh, despite the score being what it is and, and, and the opportunity to just run and milk a lot of this clock. Thirteen minutes remaining in regulation. License lead 38-17, but they're still driving. And it's going to be a handoff and 
No game on the play as Desmond Wortham. So it'll be third down. Let's see if the Hornet defense, they can short his turn over here. I was I would say at this point I think they'd take a stop, but honestly I wouldn't be surprised if Howard went for it even if they did get this stop here just with as aggressive as they've been on this drive. No reason I think they wouldn't continue to be even on a fourth down. So third and three at the 20. And Newton will line up under center here. And a little pitch to the outside. Phil Yam has room, and he's going to scoot into the end zone and hurdles a man in for style points, Chris. And they're going to break the 40-point barrier. And as fans are getting up, getting ready to file out, yeah, that's the last thing you want to see at homecoming. Insult to injury here in this, uh, you know, in this homecoming game. Been beat up. Been, they were beat up coming into it. And... Uh, and now a game that at one point looked like they were going to have a real chance to win has uh, has really gotten away from them in a in a very very big way. And again, unfortunate on a homecoming for a team that hasn't won in quite a while. And the extra point is good. So 44, 17. Bison Lee, excuse me, 45-17 with the extra point, 45-17 with just under 12 minutes remaining. Chris, this offense caught fire and it hasn't stopped yet. Yeah, well, it's kind of, it's it's really been surprising the way they've done it for as good as this this team is running the football. They have really, really thrown it around uh, in this second half. And even more surprising when you see the first half, you see the way the Hornet defensive line dominated, how difficult it was for Howard to get to to get the passing game going, um, you know, to see this uh, this Dell State defense just, I don't know if, if they've gotten tired or, or, you know, if Howard made changes on the offensive line, what the case might be, but they've really kicked, uh, kicked the Hornets' tail up front, gave Newton a lot of time, and he's just picked them to pieces. It's been fun to watch this offense, a lot of the motion and running, options, read option. Throwing the ball down the field. They have definitely bought their A game today. <coughs> Bisons will kick. Lebrowski will kick it off the lane. Since that pitch, Chris, to return at the end of the first half, I was with 35-7. Yeah, you, I mean, you kind of felt like it was a, you know, it was a, a demoralizing play, um, and certainly not one you want to end a half on. There's really, you don't really have any time, any opportunity after it to, to get it out of your mind. It just lingers there for the half, and then Howard came out and really put their foot on the Delaware State throat uh, to open up the second half, and it's been ugly ever since. Aline trying to make something happen. Gets up past the 15 to about the 16. They'll call it at the 17 and first and 10. And Black will be the quarterback again for this offense. And Chris doesn't get any easier after this game. No, I was just, you know, looking at the schedule. South Carolina State next week coming here. That's going to be a tough one. You go to North Carolina Central, the defending MEAC champions. That's going to be a really difficult one. You go to Savannah State. That's, you know, that's maybe an opportunity. Obviously, you'd like it, um, like to have it here. But uh, that, that's probably the last uh, most winnable game. Although they get Morgan State here, uh, the the home finale, Military Appreciation Day, um, and Senior Day, uh, an opportunity maybe to get a win. And Black is hit as he throws, but it looks like it's going to be completed for first down to Jordan Hanna. So good job by Black hanging in there at the last possible second, getting that ball out. Yeah, and a good catch by Hanna to come back and get it. But just to finish up that thought, Morgan State uh, picked up their first win of the season today, so they're uh, a little bit uh, down of where they normally are. And then you close out the season at Florida State for their homecoming. So obviously that's going to be about as tough as it gets. Talk about tough. And Black's passing complete. Definitely not the easiest schedule. Yeah, well, I mean, just Keenan Black, that, uh, again, that's the inconsistencies. Uh, they need to work with him just being more consistent mechanically and uh, and just being more accurate because as, as some of the, he's made more bad throws than he's made good throws. And the good throws have been really good, but the ones in the dirt or over guys' heads have been a little bit too frequent. 
Black drops the throw, looking for someone. Bison's coming after him. He holds on, gets it out, completed. And he is knocked back immediately. Completed to Hannah, and he was knocked back. Looks like on a play by Taewon Gray. So it'll be third down for the Hornets with 11 minutes remaining in regulation. So it'll be third and one. 39 yard lines with their spot. Black and the gun. And we're going to have a false start. Let's see who they call on. It looks like it was moving by Joshua Fowler. Now, false start. Offense, 65. Five-yard penalty, third down. Go up the call on Lamont Bradford, but it's like the whole line move. Yeah, I, I think the snap was a little late there because it looked like even Keenan was starting to kind of lean back uh, after he, he hiked it, and uh, center just didn't move. So yeah, that that's one that more goes on the center than uh, than anybody else. Black. Drops the throw, pressure coming from everywhere, escapes it, throws it up, has his man gross. Ooh, almost brings it in, but knocked away. No flag on the play. Oh, there's a flag on the play. We'll get rough in the pass. Rough in the pass on Devin Rollins. Hornets will take it. You take any anything you can get, especially on a, on a third and long, where you just had to chuck it up. Uh, they end up getting a break, probably the first break they've gotten in this second half. As good as Howard's been, uh, really hasn't been any luck to go Delaware State's way in the second half, and uh, and that certainly hasn't helped them. Black drops the throw, pressure, droops a man, has room. He's going to take it himself, run upfield past the 50 to about the 45, they'll mark it. And I just I think when if you can more consistently get him designed out of the pocket, you'll get more of that. You will get more opportunities down the field, opportunities underneath, and and worse comes to worse, uh, you know he can he can pick up some yards with his legs. I I would like to see more design plays for him, tailor this offense a little bit towards him, and move him out of the pocket. 45, 17, 9, 55, remain rolling right again, and throws it complete. Gross had it, knocked it away. Big hit there. But as you said, Chris, maybe with the full week of practice, Coach Carter will maybe come on and commit to Black and maybe put together a better game plan for him. Well, so again, zone coverage there. Gross, to me, Gross probably should have cut off his route and just sat down in the middle of the zone coverage. And then Keenan Black, you got to put a little bit more zip on it so the ball gets there sooner and Gross has a chance. But the combination of the two really set up Gross for that big hit and, uh, and obviously – uh, and ultimately results you know, in the incomplete pass. So we'll call it third and fourth, 45. Black and a gun, a lean to his left. And Black will run. He'll get the first down and some more. Goes out of bounds at the 45, excuse me, 35. And he'll take it. And you see it there, Chris. When he gets outside the pocket, he can move the ball. Yeah, he's, he's been aggressive running the football you know, on this drive. Uh, Goes through his progressions a read or two, and then and then tucks it down and runs it. And uh, you know, again, I I think if you can get him in situations where that's you know first read, second read, run, um, I think that's a, a very good uh, scenario for the Hornets. First and ten at the 35. Black drops, has all day to throw, no one open, and he's going to get knocked down, but he'll throw it incomplete. No grounding on the play. As they're saying, Downey was, Giovanni Downey was in the area. Hornets have yet to break the 20 point barrier all year. So, struggle offensively most of the year, to say the least, for the Hornets. Black drops the throw, going for it all. Has a man, it is going to be knocked away, but we'll get a flag. And they'll probably call interference on Cook. But he gave his receiver a chance to go get it. Kwana Kali, the intended receiver. Pass 
defense, number six, 15 yard, automatic first down. 15 yard penalty. I gotta be honest, I think that's a bit of a gift. Uh, it was a 50-50 it was ball, Cook. I think, I to me, got his head around in time and made a play on the ball. Uh, but obviously the ref saw it differently, and he was right on top of it, so he's got the vantage point. Uh, you said the Hornets haven't gotten to 20 at the season. Curious to see you know, if they get put in that situation, whether Coach Carter uh, will take the field goal or not. Black drops the throw, going back to the end zone, and that is going to be an interception. The proverbial nail in the coffin. And for the Bisons, they'll get out of Alumni Stadium with a win. Intercepted by Leland Lasseter. Just a gift there. Yeah, well, I mean, they, they threw the flag on the last play. And uh, and then on that play, it looked like there was a holding on the outside on the receiver. I didn't get to see. I think it was Trey Gross, but I didn't see who the intended target was. Um, but he was being held, it looked like to me. And uh, stopped him from making a play on the ball. Still wasn't a great throw. And uh, and like you said, it was it was pretty much a gift in the basket. Kind of with the ball on the outside, not really throwing, giving Gross a chance. And we do have a Hornet down on the play. We do, but if we can rewind this replay, you, you can see it just at the back end of it. I guess we're not going to replay it. Uh, Leaky Sayu, the, the guy down there, he got hit big time with a blindside block. Um, again, you might be able to see the back end of it from this from this angle as it flashes across your screen right there. You see him go down on the ground. It was a big hit. And, uh, and yeah, you, you, you can't see it as it happens, but right as Sayu hits the ground, uh, he comes into uh, into the screen, and uh, but it was a pretty big blindside block, and the ones that hurt the most are the ones that uh, that you don't see coming. So the Bison offense will come back, and it looks like we have a new quarterback, John Patricia, and as Newton's done, day looks like it's done, Chris. Not surprising, but now I'm curious to see if they keep throwing the ball. And here it is. And he throws the ball. Excuse me, it's going to be Kalen Johnson, the quarterback. 15, as you said, Chris Lohar with the numbers. And they're still throwing. Yeah, well, one of the things that I've, I've always believed is uh, if you put your backups in, then let your backups play. Um, you know, if you leave your starters in, then yeah, to me you should have some sportsmanship, run the ball, uh, but – you know, to me, with your backups in, these guys don't get a chance to play a lot. I'm I'm fine with letting the backups play and, and you know and see what they can do. It's a good opportunity to get some looks at the guys. Johnson pitches it. Looks like it's going to be Jordan Scott on the carry. So third down for the Bisons here. Just approaching eight minutes remaining. Third and nine to call. It's 39, ball on the 26-yard line. And the second half's got a feeling it's dragging on for the Hornets. Uh, just really been a lackluster performance for them in the second half. Screen pass set up for Ezzard. He has blockers. He has speed. He's a blur. Bangs off a guy. Pinball machine still running on his feet. Has room. 30, 20. Runs out of gas and is tackled down finally. By Azja Small. And wow, that was a screen pass to perfection, Chris. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's poor awareness by the defensive linemen. I mean, if, if, if you're all basically given, if four guys are giving free rushes to the quarterback, I think that tells you something's up. And they just didn't pick up on it. And I mean, I mean, look, just four guys just let completely run free. And now all of a sudden you've got the big fellas running downfield, blocking, you know, cornerbacks and, and safeties and you got no chance in that situation Johnson gets the snap looking for his guy got an out run wide open drop Anton Mary the intended receiver he just dropped that one Chris second down second down 
wasn't a great throw, but I'm sure Murray and uh, and his coaches would tell you that's a ball he's got to catch. Uh, but you know, I mean, again, and that's that's why you you do these things late in the game with your backups in, give them an opportunity, and uh, you know, you find out what you what you have and what you don't have out of these guys, you know, in in live in game situations. Going to be a handoff as he tries to get the corner, and he gets close to the first down carry on a play by Amir Lewis. Amir Lewis on the carry. First down, Bison. And now you got another Hornet down over there on the sidelines. Right next to the first down marker. It looks like it's Brian Cavante is down. I want to play. Not too soon to think about the summer 2018 youth camp at Delaware State University. And yeah, Brian, a sophomore, another good player for this Hornet defense, and unfortunately another good player for the defense going down with an injury. Just just really been a struggle for this team, unable to stay healthy, and that makes it difficult, um, especially on the defensive side when you play an offense like this. You know, when you get uh, when you get this many linebackers that go down with injury, it just really, really makes life difficult. Guess who's back? Forty-five, seventeen. Seven minutes remaining in regulation, and what is turning to a gloomy homecoming performance here at Alumni Stadium. And the Bisons have the ball at the ten with an opportunity to break the fifty-point mark. And it's going to be a handoff up the middle for a short game. Devon Johnson. Devon Johnson on the carry. Second down. And I, it amazes me that, you know, this far down near the goal line, the, the Hornets secondary still playing eight, nine yards off the line of scrimmage. So it'll be second and goal at the six, gain of four in the first down play. 6.30 remaining in regulation. And the Bison's just taking their sweet time as composed to the previous possessions where they were getting the ball off quickly. And we'll get a, looks like a timeout. Timeout by the Hornets. Still with two remaining first of the half. Guess they didn't like what they saw defensively. No, and and trying to you know play for a little bit of pride. You mentioned that that 50 spot, trying to keep that, um, you know, keep 50 points off the board, and uh, they'd like to get a stop here and and hold them to a field goal. But obviously for the players, it's uh, it's going to be a disappointing result, you know, regardless. Forty-five, seventeen, and Chris, the Hornets on the brink of their 17th consecutive loss, dating back to two seasons ago. Yeah, and and I again, I mentioned it earlier. You know, Coach Carter, to me anyway, I, I feel like is is pretty soon here going to start to feel the pressure that that you've. Got. I mean, he's got win, one win as the head coach here, and I know he's rebuilding, and I know this wasn't a program in great shape when he got here, and he he really overhauled it, brought in a lot of young guys, but. I feel like he's got to start to feel the pressure to get in the win column more often. And we'll have another run for a touchdown. Devon Johnson runs it in, and that'll put the Bisons up and break the 50-point mark, Chris. And the one thing at this point in the game, you know, when the backups are in, is they're much fresher. I mean, you're playing a demoralized team who's been playing the entire game. And now you're fresh with a bunch of energy, haven't played much. Uh, you know, you're going to come in and, and take advantage of some of these guys who have been in the entire game. And, and Howard just, uh, you know, able to do that and really uh, making this pretty ugly. A lot uglier than it should be with the way the first half Yeah, the went. score doesn't indicate these teams are evenly matched in my opinion. But 52-17, to 17, 
I haven't seen Hortine give up this many points in a long time. I don't know when the last time they gave up over 50, but it's been a while. Now this, I mean, it's it's the snowball effect, and it's just it's the way, uh, you know, it's the way that it goes. Especially when you're you're not really a good football team, is it it just can start to feel that point is here we go again, uh, you know, and and they're in the game, they're in the game, have a chance to take the lead at the end of the first half, and then uh, you know you know the big mistake, and here we go again. And, uh, and I just I think it, it kind of got in their heads in the locker room. They come out in the second half flat um, and, and really just haven't had any kind of answer for this Howard offense in the second half. Seven plays, 75 yards. Wow, Howard, over 600 yards of total offense, Chris, today. Uh, they can do this to you. I mean, again, they dropped 44 on UNLV. So, you know, they can do this kind of thing to a lot of teams in the MEAC. Um, I know they were projected to finish ninth in the MEAC this season, but I certainly think they're going to best that. Um, they're, they're, you know, they're going to go to three and three, um, you know, and two and one in the MEAC. So, you know, I, I certainly think that this is a dangerous team. They're going to get Morgan State at home next week. Uh, so this is a team maybe with a backdoor chance to do some things, um, you know, in this season, and it starts with their quarterback. And he's only a freshman, Chris. That's the scary part. Aline lets it roll out of the end zone for a touchback. So first and ten for the Hornets. And I think I think Jack's going to go back in a quarterback. I was about to say, it looks like it is going to be McDaniels. Going to get some reps here. I guess Coach Carter has a big decision to make this upcoming week. Well, I don't know that it is really a decision because as much as I, again, I continue to believe that he wants to play one quarterback, but uh, I mean, I don't think he's he's clearly not afraid to play two or more quarterbacks, so I, I don't know that it's it's a, a tremendous decision. I think it, you, you look at your opponent, um, you look at the way the guys perform in the week of practice against the scout team, and you, and you make a decision, but it's certainly nothing final. McDaniels has been sitting for a while. And throws it. It is going to be complete to Selby. And and right away you see the difference with with McDaniel's and and Black. McDaniel's just more accurate when he gets time. When you know when you give him an opportunity, he's going to be more accurate. But Black, you know, has his strengths too, ability to extend the play, uh, get out of the pocket, and get some big gains. Second and four, gain of six on the first down play. McDaniel's looking. He's going to take it himself. Runs, and he's going to get a first down for the Hornets. And maybe showing a little bit of athleticism himself, a bit of inability to uh, to extend the play and make something happen. So McDaniel's, good job there, not forcing anything, running the football, getting the first down. As we're at five minutes remaining in regulation. Hornets down 52-17. to 17. It's gotten ugly at Alumni Stadium. McDaniels takes a big hit. Knocked down by Aaron Motley. Incomplete pass. And we'll get a second and ten. But he's taken a couple of big hits today, and every time he's gotten up, him and Keenan Black both. Keenan took a couple of big hits as well. Uh, but they both continue to get up every time. McDaniels will look to the sideline. Have been some positives in this game. Trey Gross has to be the Delaware State player of the game. Some of the plays he made. Clock down to six. He gets it off. McDaniels time. Rolls left. Nowhere to go. He's going to go down, and he's going to be taken down by Tyree Leonard. Another sack for this Bison defense. And you give Howard the credit uh, for that defensive adjustment. Gross did have the one big play in the second half, but other than that, he's been relatively quiet. They put a second safety over the top um, and really tried to take him out of this game and make somebody else beat him. And uh, Hornets just haven't been able to find that somebody else. And, uh, you know, when they fell behind, had to, had to abandon the running game. And, uh, you know, it's really cost them, and it's shown. Third down for the Hornets, third and long, third and 14 at the 33. McDaniels dropping, has his guy Gross, Gross, goes up the ladder again. And we call that, you got Moss, Chris, Gross, over 100 yards a day. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a great play on both ends. Um, 
because there's a safety over the top, so you can't lead him like you'd like to and get the you know get it over the top. So he puts it kind of between the defenders and up where your six four man can go get it, and then the big fella just going up and like you said, Moss and people making a big play. Four minutes left. West gets it up past the forty, runs over a man, and keeps it going. And the Hornets are trying to do anything to get over that twenty point barrier, Chris. I really, I, I really would like to see him and Aline on the field pretty much every play because the both of them are capable of scoring on any play at any time. Uh, I, I think you can split them both out wide. You, they both seem capable of playing slot receiver. I think you can put them both on the field at the same time and really play your offense around them along with Gross. Has a man open deep down the sideline complete. And there you go, Chris, showing off that arm. Looks like it's to Shelby. Big game in there being the red zone. And that's, I mean, uh, this was built off of two very accurate throws from the pocket by Jack McDaniels. And, you know, I, it's he's he's the better thrower. That's just, uh, you know, that's it's, that's a fact. He is he is a better thrower, and I think that's why Coach Carter wants him to take this job and, and grab it by the throat. McDaniels throws to the corner, cut. Got a net. What a play. Good catch. That was pass interference, too. I know they didn't throw the flag. I think he was going to and said, oh, it was caught. I'm not going to worry about it. But that was that was blatant pass interference. For the first time this year, the Hornets break the 20-point mark, Chris. And McDaniels let him down the field. Yeah, I mean, I think I think part of it's kind of a prevent defense thing. We see that a lot of teams are up. They just don't want to give up a one-play touchdown. You know, so they'll, they'll, uh, they'll play real prevent defense. And I think that part of, of the way that went, but again McDaniels made some very accurate throws and uh, and the receivers made some good plays. Want to select that lining up to go for two points here. And we'll see if they keep that going. And but this is this is a lack of organization. A lack of you know it, to me this is something that should be gone over in practice and when you call two point conversion everybody should know what their job is who's on the field what the personnel is and uh, and they didn't and obviously you know now you have to burn a timeout again you know it's not a huge difference you're down big anyway a comeback's not going to happen but you know you just this is well coached teams this kind of thing doesn't happen everybody knows what the two point play is um, you know and, and the personnel who needs to be out there and what their job is and um, and it just again a disorganization comes to fruition here on a two point try with no quarterback Chris looks like they have West Selby and Aline a little trickeration here let's see what well, they well McDaniels do. is out there he's down at the <laughs> at the wide receiver position on the near side so McDaniels will be the quarterback. And it was a handoff, and it looks like it's a failed attempt. No good. So I guess for kicks and giggles, try to add to the stat sheet. Yeah, well, try something. See if it works. Maybe you can deposit it in your pocket and, and you know, and, uh, and do it at another time. But certainly... Uh, Nonetheless, going to be a disappointing result to this one. But, you know, you said it, if there is a positive, the offense has been pretty solid today despite the fact that you haven't really known who's going to play quarterback drive to drive. The offense has, has moved the ball at times, made some big plays, and uh, for the first time this season, over 20 points. So something to build on. But, you know, for the most part, this second half is just not going in any way, shape, or form the way that this team anticipated it would at halftime. So three minutes remaining, and let's see if the Bisons just sit on the ball here and just take their victory and go home. And Howard's got everybody up here just in case Delaware State wants to try an onside kick. Let's see if the Hornets do do an onside kick here with Nazidi. Zidi's kick is going to be stops wow. at the one. What a kick. And that's going to be great there. And we got a flag on the play returned by Scott. 
that was that's the first good break the Hornets have gotten all day. Obviously, a little bit too late, but that I mean, everybody in the building would have put their money on that going into the end zone. pulling out the sandwich here, putting a little backspin on that and keeping it out of the end zone. That was so half a distance with the ball barely getting past the five. And it looks like they'll be marked right at about the one yard line. So they'll be in the shutter on in zone 259 remaining. First and 10 at the 1 for the Bisons. They marked it at the 2. And a screen pass in the shutter on end zone. And it's complete to Anton Mary. And that'll keep the clock rolling, which is the most important thing. And nearly knocked that up into the air in the end zone, right over the defensive end's arm, uh, extended arm, nearly made a play. Second and eight. And it'll be, will be a handoff here. And it'll be a first down and more. Up past the 20. Handoff to Brennan. Big game for the Bisons. And that'll pretty much allow the clock to run under two minutes. Playcock run as quick as they can there at the 22, but this will be the second straight year. Howard beats DSU last year down at DC and this year at Alumni Stadium for homecoming. It'll be another handoff and taken in by Lewis and pushing and shoving afterwards. Yeah, I mean, this game had been chippy for a lot of it and. and now you've certainly got some frustration here for the Hornets on homecoming, um, you know, to, to, to get beat like this, especially in the second half, a lot of frustration. Um, that not surprisingly boiling over here late in this game. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, you can't blame them for being disappointed, especially with the way that this game looked like it was going to go and the, and the opportunity they were going to have to get a win. Last play looks like this could be with 45 seconds remaining. It'll be another handoff. And it looks like it's going to go to Brandon. And they'll pretty much be able to run out the clock here. And that'll pretty much do it. And it looks like the Hornets are going to fall 52-23, Chris. Well, another home game next week. Quarterback will be interesting to watch. And I guess looking back at this game, looking back the next, looking forward to next week, what are you looking for? Well, like, I mean, you said it looking to see who, uh, who does ultimately end up playing quarterback. Um, you know, who starts and, and how many reps. Um, if any, does... Does the not guy or does the um, you know how many reps does the backup get? So you know, uh, you got to tip your cap to Howard. They made the adjustments. Really came out of here in the second half, and uh, and were you know showed that they were the better team. Um, so again, a lot a lot of credit to Howard. Uh, Kalen Newton, player of the game, really dominated the second half with his arm. Well, you know, we talked about the opportunities he was going to give this team to make plays uh, in the secondary, and ultimately, um, second half, he made all the plays, really dominated this football game, and frustrating loss for the Hornets. You gotta, you gotta wonder what uh, what this game would have been like if the end of that first half didn't go the way that it did. Definitely could have been a different outcome. Second half adjustments by Coach London and the Bisons. 
They moved to 3-3, three and three, 500 to one in the MEAC. Hornets fall for the 17th straight time to 0-6 uh, and 0-4 in the MEAC. We'll be back with you next week as the Hornets welcome South Carolina State into the Hornets Nest at Alumni Stadium. For Chris Moore and the rest of the WDSU TV crew, I'm Byron Dixon. Have a great night. We'll see you next week.